Mark, okay. so you can kind of, you know, fill us in. And... Rick? Sure. Uh, well, nice to see everybody on another murky day here in Washington County. Um, so Matthew and Flora and Chris asked that I come in and just share sort of a brief overview of the steps taken here to four in, in our search process. We're moving from the search process to the actually hiring process, which is good news. Um, so I've got a list of things I'll just sort of mention that we've, we've, we've done together. Uh, and then if there are any questions that this, this board has of me, that this would be a great time to ask to get clarity kind of on going forward. Um, so first off, just hats off to Floor and Chris and to Matthew for all of their support. Um, uh, they're strong leaders uh, and very committed to a, a process that's executed with integrity. Um, and uh, you should be thankful that they're representing uh, the SU board and the communities um, of, of their good work. So thanks to you guys. Um, we approach this process a little bit differently because it is an interim search process. Um, and one of the things that was probably most outstanding was just the condensed timelines. Um, so the steps that, that I'll share tonight uh, reflect trying to get a, a big decision made in a short period of time. I think as I mentioned to you some time ago, a month ago when we first met each other, um, that we're going to have to not integrate into this process things that are typically found in an in, in overall search process when you have several months to conduct it. That said, I think we've made good progress and I look forward to a positive outcome. Um, so what we've done up to this point is uh, we met uh, Floor and Chris and Matthew and I soon after we met as a larger uh, board uh, and made sure we had um, agreement on what we were looking for for um, the most essential qualities and characteristics and attributes and skills we're looking, you're looking for in the next school leader um, in an interim position. Um, we just want to check our assumptions um, before we framed um, the school spring, which was where we posted the ad, up. We wanted to make sure we had agreement around the table. Um, and again, uh, as the, your, your peers, they reflected what they believed the SU board was looking for. So that was our first time uh, together, and we immediately put that on school spring and, and ran it for nearly a month, I believe, um, nearly four weeks. Um, it ends tomorrow, uh, May 3rd. Um, so it's been up for, for about four weeks in, in duration. Um, we've also had, I've had the opportunity to um, uh, meet with a number of different stakeholder groups, including Bill's leadership team, um, comprised of school-based leadership and district leadership. Um, uh, and we went through an activity uh, identifying what they felt were the key priorities, ideally, um, that we would find in, a, in an interim superintendent. Uh, and that was very instructive um, and helpful for me to think about as we were leading up to the point of having to frame the interview process and what the reference check process would look like going forward. I also had a great opportunity to meet with Bill's central office team. Um, again, outstanding leaders in their own right and uh, very committed to uh, you know, executing this process um, in, a, in a really thoughtful way. And their input was helpful as well, not too different from what I had received from the leadership team. Um, and I can, I can let you know what those, those qualities are that they're looking for if you're interested. Um, and finally, I have a, um, uh, an invitation that I put out to the leadership of the labor management team. Um, the educators who reflect the needs of their, you know, their colleagues in the field, as well as support staff, um, asking them to give me, you know, provide me input or actually meet with me, and they'd love to, but they're really busy, and I get that. Um, so we came up with a another op another option for them, and that is just to, you know, let me know directly these are, um, by email on uh, things that they're looking for. Um, and I've gotten not a, not a large response, but. Whatever, it, it's helpful as I thought about you know, what types of questions, again, in the interview process we wanted to just construct. Um, so we've taken care of that piece. I have framed, um, uh, I drafted uh, interview questions, um, which I've run by several times to Chris, Floor, and Matthew, and they've provided me some good feedback on trying to shape um, these questions that reflect the needs of the supervisory union board and the needs of the five communities and staff. Um, so that is that's a document sort of ready to um, ready to launch and get some more feedback on from the, the leadership team and central office team next week. Um, 
we have uh, assembled a, a ten-member interview committee. I know it's not a committee really because it hasn't. It's kind of a team committee, group of people um, who want to come around the table um, and, 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 and invite candidates to come forward and, and have a conversation with them. Uh, it includes again Matthew, Flora, and Chris. Um, includes two central office team members, two leadership team members, um, and two educators. Uh, yet to be decided. I'll confirm that hopefully by Monday at the latest, uh, in one student who attends U32. Um, so that is a 10-member team that um, will join together on the 13th uh, and 16th of May, uh, which is a week from next Tuesday, and or Monday and Thursday of next week, week from next week, um, uh, to interview three candidates who I'd like to bring forward to the committee to be considered as first-round candidates. Um, we had 12 individuals who applied for the job, which I thought was a, a good response, all things considered. Um, six folks were from uh, Vermont, um, and six were from away, five of whom um, from New England, and one person was from the Midwest. Um, it was important that when we first met as a group, Flora and Matthew and Chris and I, that we identified you know, what the, uh, the must-haves uh, in there background to be able to be eligible for consideration. One was licensure. The majority of the people who applied from out of state, actually all of them, with the exception of one fellow from the Midwest, um, did not have a Vermont uh, superintendent's license. Um, and I think uh, we felt it was critical to, to have that license so we, so the board's not wondering if the AOE is going to issue, because there is no such thing, I think I may have mentioned before, as reciprocity. Just because you've been practicing in Rhode Island doesn't mean that you can get a license in, in Vermont. And I think it's important that you have someone licensed by July 1st. Um, um, but more importantly, they didn't have the requisite experiences that I think that, we were, that you were looking for, uh, which was um, a minimum of three years of relevant experience, um, practicing as a school leader at a, at a district supervisory union level. Um, was, um, was, was, was important. Um, somebody who had an advanced um, graduate degree, showing that they've got scholarly work uh, in their curriculum vita. Um, and someone who had at least familiarity uh, with the evolving governance structure in, uh, in small communities, and especially even, even the idea that they knew what was happening in Vermont. Um, and that didn't preclude me thinking of bringing forward folks who didn't practice in Vermont, but again, the licensure thing got in the way with, with all of those candidates. Um, out of the six um, folks from Vermont who applied, um, two of them are um, literally new to the game. They aspire uh, to be a superintendent someday, and I didn't feel this was a, a good match for them in their early part of their, of their thinking. Um, the three folks that I'd like to bring forward for the uh, committee's consideration are three uh, Vermont um, educators. Uh, one is a current practicing superintendent in Vermont. Um, one is a retired superintendent. He's been out of the business for four years. Uh, and the third has been a superintendent in two different locations um, um, and currently is a, a, high school, is a principal, uh, is hoping to get back to the superintendency this next year. Um, it's not why I selected them, but I happen to know them um, as colleagues, um, because as a, and a Bill would, would know them as well. Um, but I think that they meet all the things that you're looking for um, and present as um, exceptional um, candidates who um, hopefully would you know, match up with what, you know, what you're looking for in the end run. Um, I'm calling all three of the candidates that have phone interviews with or conversations with them scheduled for tomorrow um, to, to ask a question again, uh, are you interested? Um, I think they are, I'm quite certain of that. Um, and to again review the things that I believe are most important for them to be thinking about as they consider, you know, applying for the job and, and entering into a first round interview, um, and to ask to answer any questions they might have as well at that time without, you know, uh, sharing too much information about not wanting to un make the play playing field on the evening. It's not fair to, to give one candidate a lot of information <laughs> and two others not as much. I'll be I'll be judicious in that regard. Um, the Matthew and Chris and Flora asked that, that your um, attorney review the current superintendent contract and uh, modify that to reflect the interim nature of the job. Um, I thought the attorney did a good job um, in doing so. Um, so it reflects not only good practice but state statute. Um, and I believe 
that that's a, a body of work that needed to happen. It needed to happen so that when you do meet the prospective candidates and they have questions about like what's the contract look like, you'll have that you know, you'll have that ready to share. Um, I will start reference checking. Um, first round of reference checking next week. Um, what I'll do tomorrow on the telephone is, is, to re is to ask from these three candidates, in addition to the letters in your curriculum vita, um, names of three or four other people that I can speak to directly um, offline. Now, again, these are people who are chosen by the candidate, so they're probably going to choose people who are going to have favorable things to say, but that's okay. Um, so I've got a line of questions that I can go a little bit deeper and get to know, um, you know a little bit more about their background. Um, so when the interview team meets um, on the 13th and 16th, um, I, will, I will share that information after the interviews because I don't want to bias people going into an interview. Um, if finalists were to emerge from this process, and I hope we're hoping um, that there would be two, um, that's not being presumptuous, that's just hoping there will be two, uh, there will be a period of time where anybody can call references, you can call whoever you like, um, and that's that's typical. So the candidates tomorrow have to know that they're going to become public very soon. Um, and uh, some prospective applicants like to keep things quiet because they don't want to, their that knowledge to be disruptive to the field, the families and communities. But in light of this interim position, it's they're going to have to. We're going to have to know more quickly than usual. Usual. Um, did I cover everything, you guys? You did? Yeah. I did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, good. So, if Chris, Floor, and Matthew, I don't know if anything else you want to share or open it up to any questions you guys might have. I, I want to tackle some of the sort of scheduling and kind of role issues that we've identified, but if uh, Chris or Floor, you have anything else that you want to add? I think so. Okay. So, I also wanted to thank Mark, and I think it's, it's been, uh, you know, we're pleased, I think it's safe to say, kind of where we've gotten to, the, the fact that we had. You know, a decent applicant pool and have you know three candidates that we feel are you know sort of very qualified to interview um, and just making sure we have all our ducks in a row and and uh, you know that things are are moving forward both expeditiously but also carefully um, so I really appreciate appreciate uh, his help with this um, so there's a kind of question of what ha happens after the first round interviews um, and there's some different aspects to that. Um, one of which is that at our working session last week, uh, we got into a little bit of a discussion about kind of not being sure really who has the hiring authority to ultimately hire this superintendent because the contract will start on July 1st and you know this body and the SE board will, assuming no court action or legislative action, uh, would have no operational authority at that point. Um, and so we kind of went back and forth, well, like, and the new boards, the board of the new district is going to be elected on the 21st, so we talked about who should be doing the hiring and should we be recommending a candidate to the, the uh, union district board that would then actually issue the contract. And um, afterwards, Bill actually reminded me that there's some language in the default articles of agreement that addresses contracts and it says that you know, the, any contract that one of our forming district boards signs or that the SU board signs, um, you know, stays in effect, essentially, uh, uh, going into the consolidation. So, in essence, from a legal standpoint, um, really, I think the answer is that anybody could do the hiring. I think that um, my personal recommendation would be that our existing SU board actually um, make the offer and issue the, the contract. Um, the, the, the rationale for that is that, um, you know, we're already doing the work. Um, it's quite difficult, I think, to ask a new board that's elected on the, the 21st um, to kind of come up to speed and make a sudden decision about, you know, who's going to be the superintendent for a year. Um, the second reason is that, um, you know, I think as everyone is aware, a lot of the folks that currently serve on our SU board are uh, likely to be serving on the new Union District Board as well, um, absent some kind of um, never-before-seen 
write-in candidate movement. Um, <laughs> <laughs> folks are going to end up getting elected <laughs> uh, to, that, to that board. So there will be some continuity in the sense of you know, a handoff from the SU board to the, the new board. Um, and then, yeah, there was another reason I had as well. I think it's something to do um, with the fact that just you know noting that the school system as it's currently constituted basically is in favor of hiring whoever we may choose and you know it's just a good way of handing it off to the to the, uh, the next board as well so if someone wants to advocate differently um, I'm open to that but I guess unless there's an objection I would propose that we kind of proceed with that idea in mind that the the current SU board would, would be the one to eventually extend an offer. Do, do they meet before the 21st? Well, that's the next question. Yeah, yeah. Let's first see if uh, if everyone generally there's consensus on that. There's no objection. Touch it I think we have consent. All right. I think that's the I think what you thought, I can say that my, I had some reservations because I wanted the, the new board to start, you know, like we're giving mm -hmm. that board like full authority. Sure, but sure. We, we talked about it and I, I think it's fine. So that does lead to then a scheduling question, right? There's two questions. Um, one is the, um, let's call it a working group of 10, is going to be conducting these first round interviews. Um, it seems to me though that if we identify finalists that this executive committee probably ought to conduct a second round, possibly a site visit and or a second round interview with the finalist candidates. Um, since we're doing the first round interviews on the 13th and the 16th, we'd be looking then at doing those interviews preferably the following week. Mm -hmm. um, so just looking at the calendar, we're talking about the week of May 20th, essentially. Um, may, maybe, tentatively speaking, we're looking at May 22nd or something. That's, that's the Wednesday that week. So we would need to possibly talk about and try to figure out when we could schedule you know, a site visit and, and second round interviews with finalist candidates um, that week, possibly that, that Wednesday. Then uh, the next question is that uh, I would assume that if we want to, if the executive committee wants to recommend or bring forward a finalist candidate or recommend uh, someone to the SU board as a whole, that board would then need to meet and uh, at least have uh, some kind of conversation or interview with that candidate. Um, and then, you know, authorize someone to make an offer and sort of carry that through. Um, our next SU board meeting is officially scheduled for June 5th, which is the first Wednesday in June, which is typically how we've done it the last few years, according to our board meeting calendar. Um, I would kind of suggest that there would be some real value to thinking about bringing that meeting forward a week earlier to the 29th of May, Wednesday. Um, because the time frame is so short, you know, we would need to make an offer and possibly <laughs> negotiate and hire someone hoping to we'll start July 1st. Uh, so there's that element to it. Um, there's also the fact that we will um, essentially lose Mark uh, on the 7th of June, when he will jet off to Montana uh, for much more enjoyable um, activities, I'm sure. Um, so, but if we weren't to meet to the 5th and we wanted Mark to be involved in sort of reaching out to a candidate and you know, offering whatever, then um, that might prove problematic timing-wise as well. Um, so that, that was my thinking about it. That, that said, it's logistically sometimes no easy thing to move a carousel meeting because it involves every board member and, and the leadership team. And so that's for discussion is, I guess first, can the executive committee meet the week of the 20th, possibly the 22nd, for a second round of interviews and site visit? And then do we want to try to have the carousel meeting on the 29th of May instead of June 5th? When, just a clarification, when you say site visit, is what we're talking about the whole day, the two candidates visiting? Yeah, okay. that's yeah. right. So at, at the end of the day, we would have the interview. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm all for doing the final interview as soon as, as, soon as reasonably as possible. possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any sense in having a special board meeting instead of moving the carousel but devoting a meeting? I mean, not that I want more meetings, but then that would just be board members. Clear the decks. We the leadership team schedule necessarily. If we did, if if carries. It's true. We could yeah, do that's, that. That's um, but we, then we are asking people to show up for two meetings yeah. instead of the one. Plus, we have the the new union district board will be meeting at a pretty breakneck pace. We're probably on the twenty seventh. Oh yeah, I mean we're. Right now, for the WCUS, the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. um, group, for the new board, it's going to be, um, we're going to have to meet on the 22nd. We yeah. have to meet. Okay. We may, it, depending on if what the board approves that night, if they do, then there won't need to be meetings for the 23rd or 24th. But if not, <laughs> by the 24th, we have to have warnings to get to an election for the 25th of June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to go pretty fast. Right. Uh, for the unified union district work. So we're, we're really on it. That week gets to be a real crunch that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I just don't, and we'll know more. I mean, as we talked about, you just talked about here, <coughs> and the transition board is made up of seven six, uh, seven or eight, I just have to do the count of the folks who are running. And as you said about the write-in piece, there are most of them are unopposed. You know, it, it, we can get a sense out of the transition board too of where we're at. We're going to ask some. Laura and I are planning to ask that in the next meeting tonight mm -hmm. of the sense of where we're at with budgets and other things. So we, because there's other work to do besides just get that budget. After oh, that okay. budget, there are two things that have to be done by July one: budget passed and policies in place. Those are the two pieces of big work. Talking with my colleagues who've been through mergers and the ones who have done it really fast, like within three months, they said you can do everything else on the other side. But you got to get Paul and Mark. And Mark's been through this himself as a superintendent. Um, you know the policies and f fiscal pieces have to be ready to go July one. Mm -hmm. And that's I mean, Lori, as we talked about all year, we Lori and I've been stripping mm -hmm. stuff down to the minimalist. And I've really been using Mill River because Dave Yons went through it really fast. Yeah. I guess my my sort of preference, all things being equal, is or thinking on this anyway, is that. It's probably better to move the carousel meeting to the 29th if we can, because um, there's so much else going on that you know having meeting two Wednesdays in a row for like every all the boards or you know whatever it just seems like a lot given all the other meetings. So I think some of the things we need to talk about is <coughs> there's some other pieces that are going on the local boards okay. that are going to influence that carousel. All right. And just times where we can provide information back to boards. Yeah. Uh, to make some of the decisions the, the uh, local district boards want to make before the end of June. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be ready uh, for some of that. I mean, I'm, I was hoping when we get to agenda for WCSU board, and I want to talk a lot more about that. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you want that now, if that helps, if we just do this kind of all naturally so that so all the information is on the table to make a decision. I guess for the purposes of this conversation, and thinking about Mark's team as well, I guess we can figure, we'll figure that out. It'll be part of that conversation. Right. Maybe there'll be some conversation after this meeting too about can we make this work or not. But what I'm gonna, um, as a way of trying to tie this off, it seems like the sense of the executive committee is that we should try to have a committee meeting on the 22nd and the carousel board on the 29th if the logistics and yeah. other considerations will be would just, I would. I would ask you because of the work the transition board has to do on the twenty second. Yeah. That you move that site new, visit one day. The and union board. Would, yeah, the new unified union board needs to do that twenty second. That you move the superintendent hiring and site visits Wednesday to the twenty third. Thursday the twenty third. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. I think it would be because I'm I'm hopeful that we can do most of the work of the new union board. We have to take care of all the organization, but that we might be able to get most of that work done that night. And that way you have a... But you're just concerned about whether the timing would be sufficient to... I, yeah. we, I don't want to wait. I would have... You could decide to do this, but I I would not want to wait for the Unified Union Board to meet till Thursday. Because you're going to be you're going to be overlapping a lot of people sitting around this table right now. Yeah, I understand. I was just... I guess I was thinking 
like we're doing tonight, we might be able to piggyback the meeting. But it sounds like that union so, meeting, it might might be. So Mark, tell me what your thought is. But I'm, I'm thinking yeah. that you're going to be an hour to an hour and a quarter each with each yeah. candidate. Yeah. Makes yes. sense. So now you just got to a three, and then you're going to talk. You're in a three to three and a half hour yeah, meeting. A, it's a three yeah. hour yeah. meeting. Yeah. This room. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good advice. So, so let's say Thursday the twenty third then is what we will shoot for for the executive committee. The mm -hmm. second round site visit and all that and then uh, to be decided maybe the 29th for the carousel we'll figure that out the only other thing I could say is you could go the other way to the 21st I'm just trying to keep you off the 22nd yeah I, I prefer the 23rd the 21st is the election. I yeah, 21st so is I don't the election. Wanna... So, yeah, we need to wait at least one day. Right? You have to wait until the third election. Not oh. for the work oh. you need to do as an executive okay. committee. Okay. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just thinking like oh, yeah, yeah, polls, sir, be, yes. polls being open and stuff. Like you know, I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. We, we can all vote early. You don't have to wait till that day to vote. No, I understand. I like that. But, but people are. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to tell people they That's fine. Just kidding. Gotcha. So the, the 29 is the, the, the full board meeting. Potentially. 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 We'll yeah. Get to that, yeah. So in terms of, uh, and, and Mark, let me just be, is that most of the kind of outstanding things that we needed to kind of touch on? Yes? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other questions that the executive committee members have uh, for Mark or for Chris and myself about how this is going or where it's going? I have a couple. One is, um, <coughs> I do anticipate the interview committee, a working group, will make its decision. It's not the formal body. Right. I think we saw it as they, they're recommending. Yeah. So just talk it through and hopefully. Yeah, so I've got a, a couple little protocols I'll okay. use to try to get to yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. And also about the contract. Um, I'm curious how it might be different from our current, um, specifically separation, how that would be handled if it doesn't work out on either side, and then pay. But that, I presume, will be a negotiation. But Chris, could I ask you to circulate the, the draft superintendent contract to the executive committee? May I yes. Sorry, go ahead. advise you that you go into executive session and you yeah. do that there? Okay. Let's do that then. Yeah. And you can have whomever you'd like in that executive session, but they do that there. Okay. Fair enough. And that clarification is that on, on the, when we put it in school spring, we put a range. We you thought did. that we yeah. needed okay. to be up front from okay. the very beginning. So, so that already was, that's been. That, that's already been. The range ends. Yeah, yeah the range is up. <coughs> yeah, we, we don't need to go in the executive session to okay. so that question. I mean, at some point, we need to look yeah, we need to make a good point that. about if the separation doesn't work out of the way, I wouldn't anticipate that there'd be a problem for a year um, that we couldn't live with. But you never know. We should still be determined. We want to be in an executive session to discuss. Yes, yes. okay. Yes. Yeah, that's some, I think that's it's a good point. We should. Good. Okay, uh, so if, if, if there are no other questions, then we can set Mark free. Release me. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thank well, nice to see you, you again. Keep yeah. up the good work. Thank you. Hang in there. <laughs> really you're looking good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Coming your way. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> 2.2 is WCSB board. We just talked about the timing of the next meeting, so let's talk about the agenda. Yeah. So um, I know that the school quality committee wanted to do some work on hearing a report back on data for June. We wouldn't be ready for the, with the snow days, all our whole assessment windows have been pushed yeah. for local assessments. So we're not going to hit June 5th for our assessments. We have some stuff from March, but we wouldn't hit for the end of the year. Okay. Um, so um, it been suggested to me by my colleagues, and I'm going to talk more to the leadership. When I say my colleagues in the central office, colleagues, administrators, I'm going to talk more to the leadership team on Tuesday, but that some of that almost wait as for uh, a coming in of this is where the current state's at right now. And that would be happening, you know, it would be the end of June until all that's ready. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, just remember school's going to the 21st, so we've got a lot of lots right. that's been pushed um, with the weather. The other thing that's been suggested, and it's been suggested by quite a few people to me between board members and staff, 
is that there'd be some sort of celebration of the good work boards have done over the years for Washington Central. It's the last meeting of the SU board that there be um, some sort of celebration and activity inviting old members, I shouldn't say old members, former members. <laughs> Please strike that from the record. <laughs> Can you delete that for me? Uh, former members to attend and be recognized for the great work they've done to help lead this supervisory union over the years. Um, and that it be a celebration of the great work uh, that's happened in Washington Central over 44 years. So. Um, and I think that's the right tone. I know that um, I have a feeling there might be, dare say it, but I think it should actually be done in a second carousel somewhere in the end of June because boards are talking about what they might want to move to their capital funds mm -hmm. because of the ability that we all learned about from Chris Leopold that for money put into the building capital fund, they'll stay there for that intended use. And Lori's not going to be able to hit the end of the year financials with what fund balance is going to even look like with a pretty solid projection until the middle of June. Unless, okay. Lori, you think no, I'm too late? No. Okay. And you, I was pressing you the other, last week when I said middle of June, and I kind of got the, uh, like, come on, we, we can get, yeah, you got the big deep breath. That's a good way of putting it. Um, so I know folks are going to want to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. So it might be something the week of, uh, the week after U32 graduation, and it would be easier for Lori and I if we actually had everyone in the same place right. to say, if that's what you want to do, that we'll give you your financials and kind of talk with everyone. And here they are. You know, they, you've got to look. We're we're going to let you know what has to stay in the general fund because there's going to have to be money that goes to the locals that's got to stay in the general fund to roll over because we haven't finished receiving everything we're supposed mm -hmm. to receive and collecting. It doesn't all end mm -hmm. magically. <laughs> on a certain date in June. Yeah. So things, checks have to clear and things like that. Um, so those are just things that are in my mind about thinking about that carousel meeting and thinking about the work that local boards want to do. So. Well, let me ask then, almost, um, I'm just sort of brainstorming it here. Uh, it almost sounds like there is a rationale for having two carousel meetings, one at the end of May, one at the end of June. Like, I think it seems, even for June 5th, it seems fast to put together like a celebration. And I'm also a little uncomfortable with the idea of trying to go through a, a superintendent candidate interview and discussion and possible action with the SU board be and kind of be be, on top of that, be scheduling a celebration. Yeah, I don't think those should, those two should be together. I agree with you there. So, but in terms of um, <clears> this, <throat> so maybe it makes sense to try to plan it out that way. We have uh, so we have a special meeting and one carousel meeting. We don't need to have two carousel meetings. Well, that's the question. It, Is it, are there things that the that the district boards need to do, either on the 29th or on the 5th? We're all meeting in May. All of the local boards are meeting in May. Most of the local boards are meeting in May. And most of this stuff is, I don't feel like I can answer that because I think those are, I just think of looking at <clears throat> all of you and your difference. Like East Montpelier has really narrowed down their agenda so far. Some have really broadened it because of conversations. You have different conversations going at each board about how much you want to try to do before right. June 30th. So I can't answer that for you. Um, but I think that they're, you know, I think you're going to know more by, you know, the end of May, frankly. Because I think really what June's going to be about is how do we set up, you know, what goes into capital funds and what has to stay in general funds. And, you know, we're going to be, Laura and I, we don't have it right now, but at some point we're going to say, this is what we think the fund balance needs to be for Washington Central UUSD, which is a lot less than the combined cap fund balance that we have across all the entities. Mm -hmm. it's one of the, that's one of the positives of coming together as one entity, <coughs> because there's just, you don't need that 4%. Mm -hmm. That's across all of it, you know, so it's, it's gonna be one of the, so we're, we don't have a number for that yet, but we're, getting, we're working on that. So, for the 29th, then, do we want to just have an SU board meeting? It sounds like the district boards are in different places. 
possibly. So we can't make a blanket statement about sort of the necessity of their meeting that evening. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't try to meet. I think what my recommendation from talking this through and thinking in my own head here at the table. Yeah. So I'm kind of brain. I yeah. am brainstorming. Yeah, so yeah, take yeah. it as that. That the 2019 meet for the interview and hiring of the interim superintendent. Right. You have one agenda item. Well, unless there's something. Unless there's something else. Right, right, right. Is there something else, right, right, right. else we'll put on it? But that's right now. That's the first thing. That's item. the main focus. Yeah. And then that you move the June 5th carousel carousel to I'm going to give you a date here right to June 19th. Okay. And there might be some graduations. There is, yeah, see, you're, you're already, I don't even, because some of the elementaries are doing graduations on that Wednesday. So, and that's where we're going to start hitting is the eighth grade graduation. You and, prefer the 19th over the 26th? Uh, the 26th is the vacation. You're going to lose a lot of people on the 26th. All right. Because yeah. the the LSA Thursday, school is. To, I mean, you're going to have the same problem. You're going to have eighth grade. Oh, we start, there are some graduations on the 19th, some on the 20th, and some on the 21st. What about the 18th? Is anybody's graduating on Tuesday the 18th? I, I, so right now, I, Laura, I don't know without hearing the schools yeah. what is going on. I can tell you there will be something going on every night from June 10th on. That's just the way it is at the closing of school. We always have something going on somewhere. And Do that's... You know, uh, the no, but I think it looks well, like we could also, on the website. Yeah. We can look it up. Yeah. So we, can, we could also do no, it. No, but it's, it's, it's not going to be just graduation. I mean, there are events. It's just yeah, the way the end of school is. Courses and plays. And, yeah. We could try to do it the 12th. You know, yeah. I don't know. Just, just trying to think of it. But, um, all right, well, let's plan on the special meeting on the 29th, then, for the purpose specifically of recruiting and, and such. Uh, and then, you know, tentatively agree that we'll move the date for the carousel meeting later in the month of June and try to find a date for that. And if, if people are comfortable with it, I will work with Bill on trying to identify possible dates and then we can and what I'll, I'll, pull the... Yeah, I'm going to pull the buildings right now and say for Mondays and Wednesdays, tell me what's going on for June. Because that's going to be the first thing. It's going to be faster than us all to try and scramble right sure. here. Yes. And the principals are going to know. And there might magically something might appear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Great. Uh, I also just wanted to mention quickly something I should have done under 2.1, but it's probably time for our next communication out to the WCSU staff about the status mm -hmm. of the the um, search process. So again, if, if, unless there's an objection, I will draft something and work with Chris and Floor, um, you know, just saying where we're at and kind of what's next and get that out on Monday. Yes. Okay. Anything else on agenda, Bill, specifically? You think you covered most of the stuff. I just want to make sure we. Sorry, Bill. I'm oh, I'm sorry. I was no, writing. No, sorry. I'm trying to make sure I get this done. So, uh, no, I, I think that that's the piece. And I think if it sounded like your colleagues, our colleagues around the table gave you permission to kind of work on this with me, and we'll try to put something together along with thinking about what a celebration might look like. All right. And we'll put that together. Okay, great. All right. Okay, uh, 2.3 WCUUSD update. Um, I mean, just to be transparent, I really was wanting to take Act 46 update off our agenda, so I did that, and <laughs> all of this. Um, but I will briefly try to give you what I know about kind of where things uh, stand with the legislature and with the court case. So uh, my understanding is that the Senate has voted to disband the conference committee uh, that was trying to work on reconciling the, the differing bills in the House and the Senate regarding uh, possible delays to um, the murder timeline um, that's currently in place. Uh, they could not, the conference committee could not reach an agreement, and so 
the Senate specifically has voted to disband that committee and re reform it and, and appoint new members. Uh, my understanding, at least as of yesterday, is that the House has not followed suit and that the Senate cannot force the House to take that vote or to take that action. So currently that's kind of, a, I guess I describe it as a state of impasse um, at the moment. And not a, I guess my editorial comment on it is it doesn't seem promising in terms of something actually happening in the legislature to provide for um, a delay. That being said, the legislature is always a, um, a mysterious force. Uh, I can pull things together at the last minute as well, so. I, I read somewhere that Ruth attached it to some other bill, H-121. Oh, really? He did. What? He did. Yeah. You're right. And, and I, but who knows what will happen from uh -huh. doing that or what that bill got. Interesting. Okay. So that's the current status as of up to the minute. Um, the court case, other people probably know more about it. My understanding is that filings, second round of filings happen on Friday? Yep. With regard to the yes. appeals? Or with regard to, no, uh, I'm sorry, it's with regard to decision. The, to the, the, the things that, that Judge Mello has not yet ruled on, the, the sort of causes so, that, uh, the non-constitutional related mm -hmm. um, causes for bringing the suit. Mm -hmm. There's another round of filings that are happening. Um, and that is, Dorothy, all I know about it. I don't know if the... I, I know that, and then I did hear from somebody that said, basically said when he dismissed those other parts of the suit, that it wasn't that they were, quote, I'm using citizen language ain't he good mm -hmm. it was that he thought more than one person needed to make a decision about those heavy topics and so the Supreme Court allowing us to get to the Supreme Court sooner rather than later was the smart thing to do that's just a comment mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay which makes sense to me so that's kind of the backdrop of you know things turning that, that could possibly change the, um, the order we're currently under, the timeline we're currently on. Um, in terms of that timeline, uh, everyone's aware, I think, that the, um, the election is set for the 21st. Uh, we have candidates for all 10 uh, positions that are available um, you know, from all towns. Uh, there is a, a candidate forum which is um, scheduled, um, it's being coordinated or, or put on or sponsored by the League of Women Voters. Yep. Um, it's from six to eight, it's gonna be at the Berlin Elementary Library. Um, and all the candidates have been invited. I don't have any sense if they have confirmed their attendance I or not, other than the just, ones in this room. So we sure. just got the, the, the emails out today with, because we knew the time and place. So uh -huh. What day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday, May 7th. Tuesday, May 7th. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and the HR system is just about ready to go today. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been working. Awesome. She's been working with Nemric to move everything over into a, one merged entity, and the system's up and running for a general ledger, and account payable, and account receivable. Mm -hmm. And HR went yesterday. HR went yesterday. And payroll's almost done. Payroll's almost done. So, so we're just about ready. ready to be operational for one system, which is she spun it up in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Just wow. a miraculous time job with her team. Thanks. They've been, they've been going, um, we're going to be bringing some things tonight. Um, I've been getting queries from the heads of maintenance of every building about things they need to have mm -hmm. to be able to get summer work done. And professional development that teachers have as a benefit that they're contractually obligated to. They want to know if they can start signing up for courses <clears throat> and how we do that. So we'll be talking about that in the next meeting tonight. <laughs> Uh, but you know those but good piece of work is going um, and we started this week uh, we're doing a second analysis we had one already but it's kind of checking our work of what policies are common already across the system and hoping to have a big slate of those ready to go for the new board so we can say this has already been done in common they're exact same words take this one and then where are the ones that are similar wordings different and then I'll let the you know obviously let the board decide what do they want to go that and where are the ones where their policies individualized by schools and how do you want to deal with those? Um, the nice thing is all of our required policies by law are common, so we're ready to go on those. Um, so that's actually, that's a huge piece of work for, um, that it's good work of the policy committee and we really should thank them for the past couple of years of work they've done and getting things aligned. It's, it's our recommended in, um, Policies to consider where we've got some variances. So. Other than um, the borrowing issue, what one of your biggest concerns? The borrowing issue, we think we have a way out. Mm -hmm. It took it took to about Monday. We still don't have it all written. We have it verbal, so we're okay. but we're confident what we're being told. With the banks, mm -hmm. yeah, with the banks. Yeah. If we're gonna we're gonna have some, uh, we'll be losing some revenue <clears throat> as projected in the budget. Because remember, we make money on the trash by what we borrow and then reinvest. So we'll be losing some revenue. But Lori's and Lori's forecast, and I checked it over this afternoon, I agree with her, is it's something that we will be fine with in the budget. So, so then what, on the business side, what are your biggest concerns at this point? Uh, my biggest concerns are getting set up for summer work because we really don't stop. I mean, we're right now, usually by now, we already have a stack of POs for next year ready to go. So we, you know, it seems like we have people that, we have outside folks that come in and help us with cleaning, like carpet cleaning, uh, cleaning the ducts, you know, and that's why the maintenance people are coming. I said, just start making the pile. And so we're going to be asking tonight for authorizations to start releasing POs because we've got to do it. And it's just keeping the operations going. It's summer, yeah. extended year services, professional development. Uh, we have plans for people to, you know, work with summer, um, you know, like the project-based learning that's gone on U32 or the different learnings that, you know, different things teachers have been doing. So we're, so far, <coughs> we've had very little turnover in staff compared to other years. So that's making things a little easier right now. Usually right now we're up to our ears and turnover, you know, hiring processes and things going on. Mm -hmm. But contracts are back, are due back the 15th of May, so we'll know more then. I really just want to thank you both, especially mm -hmm. for navigating this extraordinary situation, you know, um, with incredible skill. <coughs> and it's greatly appreciated, and I hope that you'll pass that along to we will. Uh, the folks that are most most in, impacted by it as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we're lucky. The, the thing that I said er, earlier when Mark was here, and I, he has been one of the people I've queried. I just said, you know, mm -hmm. there's probably 10 superintendents I'm constantly querying through email or on the phone saying, so how'd you deal with this? Mm -hmm. And I know Lori's doing that with her colleagues who are mm -hmm. business yeah. managers. It's like, okay, you guys have been down this road. What'd you do? And you know, we've really taken a minimalist approach. That's what our project plan is. It's like, what's the minimum to get to operations? So there's going to be a lot of work still, and I want to say that there's still going to be a lot of work after July one. 
you're, you, and really for the newborn, it's going to be, and I'm, you know, I'll wait for that board to see what they want to do in June, but they're going to need to start talking about how they want to operate. And that governance piece is going to be big to talk about, you know, um, everything from student issues to hiring to budgeting, you know, just figuring out that governance piece. And I'm going to recommend to you that you think about in the summer and the fall that you, you hire someone as a governance coach to come in and facilitate those conversations. And I'll tell you, but to, to and that's what quite a few new, board, new board, merge boards have done. Is for us to decide. You know, they help help that conversation. Okay, thanks. I think we can move to two point four. So this is. I'm going to have Lori go through the. In, in, the you've seen this for several years now. This comes from the auditor. All the local boards. U32 was the first one to see it last night. We do it in May. It's a financial operations questionnaire that's on page. <laughs> Uh, four, mm -hmm. and I think Lori, from what I reviewed this with U32, I didn't review this one particularly, but not much has changed from last year. Absolutely nothing. And has changed. this has to go. This board needs to have a discussion about it. it. Needs to be in the minutes. Matthew, you'll need to sign it, and uh, it goes to our auditor when they do their audit to say did this, you know, and we're we're basically doing a self assessment. Mm -hmm. Lori does it yeah. of where we are in our procedures. And it was actually, um, this is a requirement by the state auditor. Mm -hmm. And so that they haven't asked for copies to be sent to them, but statewide, this is something that every school in the entire state has to do. Right. Once a year. So I'm going to give a couple minutes to look this over. And then uh, if there are any questions or discussion, we can do that. <coughs> I'm sure it's not significant, but some are capital X's and some aren't. Is, is that distinctive? No, I think it's just a print thing. Okay. <laughs> they look the same on the screen. And the, the U center here, are they directed to you or you the U? Where is that? Like when it says on the second page, do you participate in any business which does business with the SU? I'm sorry, which line is it? Uh, it's up if you one, two, three, four, five. Five up from the bottom. Do you, yeah. There are a couple that say you. And so well, I'm wondering if, if who it's directed, the you is directed to. You and like for the embezzlement, that's really the the SU. Like the second one down, have you experienced that for embezzlement? It's not me. It's okay. mm -hmm. it's the entire Washington Central Supervisor Union. So, so that's what the U is typically meaning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, an accountant wrote this. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I could have heard it differently. Questions about the financial questionnaire? Mm -hmm. Would you like to put that one where it says, um, does any employee that you know of participate in any organization as a vendor? How would you find the answer? And, and I'm okay. assuming you're the one filling this out. How do you find the answer to that? Because it's a, um, a lot of it, I'm assuming it's all the teachers. It's just from. Or is it just the central learn, office? It's, it's mainly from looking at our vendor master who we will okay. pay bills to. Yeah, just. Okay. Thanks. Because if an, if an employee is a vendor, typically they would have to run through payroll. They sure. would not be a vendor, they would be an employee. <coughs> so you, you catch that because you can't send the IRS. Um, Two different tax forms for an employee. Okay. So that's how you would catch it. Is there a conflict of interest policy in, the, in your employee handbook? 
Um, actually, you guys um, created a policy because we had that missing, and it is in the state required policies. So there's a conflict of interest for everyone, all the way from the board down through. Mm -hmm. Previously, our language had said it was only for the board, and then mm -hmm. Bill brought that forward and we updated yeah. it a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks for asking. We'll let the record reflect that the committee has discussed the annual financial questionnaire. And uh, as now concluded, that's why it's watching. That's why I got it the last time. There you go. It's nice. I don't know if anybody has a pen I can borrow. It's my lucky budget pen. <laughs> Try not to, to steal the mojo. Right? <laughs> Don't take um, okay, so uh, Bill, are we going to need to go into executive session for contract approvals? I hope not, but if okay. you would like to, we you can Should let me we, know. Uh, I don't think we need to either. I'm just checking, but um, I guess let's do the other things first, and if it happens to come up, then we'll have it at the end. Okay. Um, so uh, we're accepting a retirement, which is on page. Do you want to start with the board order? So you want? We can start with the board order. Sure. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. There's two. Um, I move with the the amount of six hundred seventy six thousand two hundred fifty four sixty nine cents and four hundred thirty seven thousand eight hundred twenty two and eighty seven cents. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the board orders as moved, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Yes. Uh, okay. 3.4. So Jane Caswell, who has been a special educator, a, a half-time special educator with us for three or four years now. She was up in Berlin this past year. She's been doing all the out-of-district placements. Um, is retiring, and she's done great work for us as a special educator. And she, her resignation is on page six. I'll move that we accept the retirement of Jane Keswell. I'll second. Any discussion? Just to thank her for her service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of accepting the resignation of Jane Caswell with our appreciation and thanks, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Uh, accepting a new hire. So we have, yes, as you remember, the last meeting or two meetings ago, I don't remember exactly, but within the past month, Joanne Menenkoff retired. Mm -hmm. And so we're presenting with Deborah Gale as a teacher for Triple E, replacing Joanne's position. And then we're doing a little bit of reconfiguration because we're finding more speech language pathology uh, <laughs> services needed. They're happening with our student needs out there, and so part of Jane and part of some savings that's overall in the special ed uh, budget is allowing us to bring to you the second SLP. We have quite a few needs in this area. And that's Emily Hickler. And that's Emily Hickler. Thank you. Thank you. It's funny that she's a speech and language person with a name like Hickler. Yeah, I didn't put that together until right now, Chris, so thank you. Perfect. I moved that we accept. Was that needed? Yeah, it's needed. Yeah. Yep. And was that we accept the hiring of Emily Heckler? Or do we say? Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can say both. Emily, and, and Emily Heckler and, um, and Deborah Gale. Is there a second? A second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor of approving the hire of Deborah Gale and Emily Heckler, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thanks. So we'll go to 3.2. So um, this is something we've been doing at the four um, districts that are that have 
an association representing their education support personnel. It happened at U32. It will happen at, it's happened at East Montpelier, Berlin, and Callis. Uh, we have a couple folks that are ESP that might, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Usually are behavior interventionists that we hire through Washington Central. So um, I'm asking for approval of the ESP contract. It was 3.5% salary increase. There was a few changes in working conditions, and it started to recognize that behavior interventionists and personal care attendants were some of the big changes. You, you, Dave wrote a summary that was in the paper. I can give like more detail I can, but it's, um, those are really, I'm just giving you the quick highlights on it. So, uh, the other pieces that were, the association asked for access to Vermont Municipal not, not, not municipals. Yeah, it is. Vermont Municipal Retirement Association. Right. Beamers. Beamers. I was just thinking it was Beamers. Um, <laughs> and I should say that. Um, for retirement, if they so choose as employees to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Steve was part of that negotiation. So I would encourage us. I would encourage you <laughs> to approve the contract. <laughs> so moved. Is that enough? So we have a motion to approve the SP contract for academic year 2019-2020 as negotiated by the new meetings committee. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Thanks. Point three. So for 3.3, um, I would recommend that for the central office administrators, um, which are the curriculum director, the security <coughs> director, the business manager, and the technology coordinator, that they have the same salary increase as the teachers had in their contract negotiations, which is 3.1%, and that for the rest of the office falls the ESP increase of 3.5%. Um, I'll make a motion that we um, have an increase for the um, uh, non bargaining administrative yeah. staff yeah. Yeah, um, at 3.1 percent, and all others who are not administrative staff but in the central office um, have an increase of 3.5 percent for the 2019-2020 school year. I'll second. Increase of what? What was the second percentage? Three point three point five. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So basically, just, I'm just trying to mirror the contracts. Yeah. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Okay. Uh, we have reports to the board. We have time for them. Okay, well, I I haven't done anything beyond what most of you have seen in superintendent in the transition reports. I just focused on that, frankly. So uh, what we're putting here were other memos that you've seen and also memos that have gone out to the employees. Um, you've all received these in the emails earlier, so I don't think there's anything. I'd be glad to take it if you have any questions on this or any details. Um, but just trying to keep people as up to speed as we can with what's going on. I was actually a little, I mean, not to take up people's time, but I was a little curious about the uh, the educational benefit review. Yeah. Um, so I was at that today. It's great. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it was amazing listening to teachers. They're actually taking our own education. IEPs, individual education plans, that have been um, blacked, redacted. Yeah. We've got to use that word. Here's that word again. Uh, for our student information, for our student names, so we didn't know where the who the student was, and we look at it over their continue three year continuum between evaluations, and say, did what we do in our IEP have any improvement in the education? That's why it's called education benefit. What benefit did the IEP provide? Um, there were a lot of ahas and a lot of no. A lot of what? So ahas. Um, if you could give a little bit more detail. Yeah, I was going to. Okay, sorry. Um, a very imbalance of services across schools. A mm -hmm. uh, very imbalance of how much service is given to kids for how much you need. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> not much data used in the IEPs. 
they're saying we need to have proper, I mean, it was said yesterday it's a two-day training. Mm -hmm. One day was half, because we don't want to take all special educators for a day out of school, so it was two days. Uh, and there were general classroom teachers there, special ed, all special ed staff, and administrators. So we all participated. Um, those are the, the big thing of we need progress monitoring. It needs to be in there. We need to get it so that we're monitoring kids a lot more regularly. Um, and using a common, common assessments to do that. Um, a lot of it is nice anecdotal data that talks about, that we review. there were a lot of times there were comments about the kid, but not to how they were performing. So, you know, about the kid's character and who they were and, mm -hmm. you know, great things, but the IP is about tracking and seeing what, how we help students um, move, get back to good grade level targets. And we also saw some, some kids that were on IEPs that probably shouldn't be on IEPs. Mm -hmm. um, and there were questions from teachers about, you know, why didn't we stand up more to that? And really honest back from, I know for myself, I said to the group I was with, I said, hey, there's political pressure mm -hmm. to provide services at times. And um, Does that mean more political pressure or parent political pressure or principal? Both. Or? Both. Both. All. Oh, okay. All. Um, was there a sense as to why the, um, you said that there's variability across the SU mm -hmm. in terms of, was there a, a source as to why there's variability and, and was it just, and who is determining, you know, the level of services and, and how is the variability? There's some standards. Measured? They're trying to develop standards of practice if a student is here and has this need, this should be the type of service they should get. Mm -hmm. And there hasn't been those standards of practices, plus there's there isn't proof of this, but there was wondering about ensuring people have full jobs at certain sites. And that didn't, that so came out of teachers. Services. Yeah, okay. justifying someone's role. Mm -hmm. okay. um, in terms of the monitoring that you're talking about, yeah. what um, was there a sense as to what the um, monitoring is now in terms of what intervals and what it should be? So there's very little intervals right now. It's a lot of anecdotal data instead of saying, we have systems in place. We talk about STAR 360. It can be used as a monitoring tool to do what's called progress monitoring, where you're monitoring every three to four weeks, understanding where the student's at and seeing is they're making progress. So what happens is when you go over, there, there are sometimes here's the initial evaluation assessments, but there was no tie back into any other assessments mm -hmm. for the whole three years. Mm -hmm. So we're going back to 2014, we pulled cases. So it's, you know, we've got to start really monitoring and it's got to be something that's common that's crossing because we have some of those cases we're crossing schools. The kid might be in a school for one year and go to a second and we'd see very different services based on the personnel because of the personnel structure that we have for special education instead of, and so there was a talk and I saw a lot of nodding ahead of folks about we've got to talk about moving the structure of the special ed staff to where the student need is not based on the building allocation. So. How does all of this align with our data walls and buildings and interventions? Is it kept pretty separate or because we see it with students, so does that data reflect at all in the IEPs? It's not in the IEPs. Now remember, we're going back three years, Floor, yeah. so no, I know, I know. a lot of times this is not being written into IEPs. It should be. Yeah. It should be, yeah. so it's, it's a lot more of, um, aligning the IEP process with the MTSS process. And mm -hmm. we're going to be, we're being pushed here from 173, Act yeah. 173. Yeah. So this is where we're going to have to go. And we should be going here. Um, there are some eye-opening things for me that I didn't understand because I'm just not down those weeds, and nor should I be mm -hmm. as the superintendent. I mean, we've got Kelly and yeah. that whole team, and they should be doing it. But I thought we ha would have had more of our progress monitoring assessments in there, yeah. in the IEPs, and in there the two or three times a year that there's an update to the IEP process about where kids, you know, you write an objective and you're supposed to report at least twice a year on how the kids mean that objective. They're not written in a smart goal way where you're saying, by this measure, I'm gonna know. It might just say the kid will be 80% accurate. By what measure? You know? And so it, it makes it hard to really be able to say, is there growth? Is there growth over time? And what we were seeing was things were pretty flat mm -hmm. at best. 
flat across. Flat across growth over three years for kids. Great, it's a great training. It's something that has come because of 173, the Agency of Education uh, contract, was working with the Education Support Agency out of Connecticut. Stephen had done this work when he was down in Connecticut, so it's something yeah. he's familiar mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, something that we really need to do and to be, you know, it's a, it sometimes can see it a dichotomy when it really isn't, it can be a both, but how do you do the individual needs when you have to think about the system needs? And you can do both at the same time. And it's actually easier to do the both when you think about it as a bigger system than if you're in small parts. Where is there any highlights from your financial report? Actually, I have. It's the same as all last month. There you go. Next month, there should be more news to share. All right. Are there any other issues or future agenda items? I'm going to have a few more hires. A couple more hires. They'll be around in special ed. Okay. Um, so if you need to do an interview, yeah. I may be asking you, I won't be here are you, for that meeting, uh -huh. obviously, but sure. I would ask that you, will make sure there's something written that you can approve sure. as higher, just so people aren't waiting for yeah, contracts. Absolutely. Okay. Then without objection, we will adjourn at 5.15. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 5.33. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, we will receive guests. We have Jody. Hi, Jody. Okay, nothing specific to uh, address or count on? Okay, just check. Great. Thanks for being here. Uh, any agenda revisions or board, board comments? I would ask with you that if oh. three four uh, could go before three three, we want to make sure we have that purchase orders discussion, and we might even ask for a motion that's not on here. Uh, to have a <coughs> sense of where the transition board is on. Okay. Without objection, we'll uh, switch the order of three point four and three point three of the agenda. And I'm going to step out and grab a couple things I'd like for the first piece of the okay. discussion agenda. Okay. Can we do a quick round of introductions for the Oh, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Sure. Uh, would you like to start? Sure. You know, your yeah. first. Of sure. course. Yes. Dorothy Naylor Carlos. I sat next to you before. Laura Devo, Business Administrator. Yes. Suzanne Colbert, Callis. Hi. Will Baker, uh, Worcester, Dodie. Matthew DeGroat, Worcester. Carl Wicke, Worcester. Nicole Ferry. Berlin. Berlin, yeah. Florida Smith from Ismail. Yes. Nice to meet you. Oh, hi, I'm Lisa. I met you at the meeting. I'm merely the minute taker. I'm not on the floor. I'm a mere. Our spectacular minute taker. Jerome. I'm your camera operator. <laughs> you are. <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, welcome, Nicole. Thank it's you. A pleasure to have you. Congratulations Thanks. on your election. Uh, are there any public comments and correspondence? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of April 25th? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. I, I had some. So under 3.11, Lisa, um, mm -hmm. I think that needs to be reworded. Uh, I guess for the first sentence, I would want to put that I share that the following petitions have been received in, in Worcester. Seems important to put there. Okay. And then the, the second sentence I, I is inaccurate, actually. Because okay, sorry. No, that's all right. So board members shared the names of um, candidates from their towns okay. uh, that have submitted petitions to run for positions on the WCU USD board. So, 
So there's no, nobody's been designated. It's just that they've been nominated for, or they, they've submitted petitions to be on the ballot for the election. I just don't want any sense to be that, you know, we feel like we've appointed these people or <laughs> something like that. So. Okay, so I changed it to board members share the names of candidates from their towns that have submitted petitions to be on the ballot for election to the WCUUS D board. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other uh, comments or changes to the minutes? Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes of April 25th as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All abstained. I wasn't here. Yes, I'm getting abstained. Susanna and Carl abstained. Yeah, I guess I'm abstained as well. I wasn't here either. Monday. Lots of abstentions. <laughs> we, can, we can still vote in it. Yeah. We're not here. I think with all the abstentions, we need less votes to pass it, so we should be fine still. Mm -hmm. um, okay, 3.1. After the twenty budget. So I, I have you turn to page five. We said that there were a couple things when we looked at last meeting. Um, and a couple things I want to talk about is with the actual budget itself and then the format of presenting it to the community. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is have you take a look and uh, we'd like to have any questions about, you know, as I said last week, this is kind of been a, we wanted to get a success of making steps to get to here. So we showed you two different versions last week that now this is how the budget would be presented um, to the voters and just the budgetary piece, you know, of the lines and the different uh, functions that are in the budget for consolidated Washington Central Unified Union School District budget. The numbers haven't changed. What you'll, what the big pieces that came out from the second birth we gave you, remember I handed one out that had, still had zeros in assessments and we deliberately did that, you won't see those in here. And those have been taken out. That was really the big change from the second one I gave you last time where the first one was by town. It had the town allocation so you could see the steps of how we rolled it up from the individual budgets to a merged budget. And if you remember, the big thing that I said that happened, the difference if there was a difference of the 29 million to the 33, it's because we need to account for the revenue that comes in. It doesn't change the educational tax rate, but we need to account for the revenue that comes in that comes into the central office for offsetting trans mainly transportation and special education. Is there something to break that out so that you're, um, if it doesn't change the tax rate, is the tax then really only 29? Million dollar budget as opposed to a 33. Um, no, it's still it's still on the, that. You, you have we have to follow the tax the, the tax formula the tax calculations and Laura, you can jump in here soon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know when you see and the reason I went and grabbed all these mm -hmm. off the I'm going to pass this out in a minute is for how we calculate taxes. You may, may remember an old form we used to get from the state that say what's your educational revenue that you minus off of it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and then that was your education spending, which is still the same in this as it was in the locals. You have what's ed spending. And, and the reason I ask is because you pointed out last week, it's going to be appear like it's a $4 million increase. I that. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, yeah, it just seems like that we should be able to. So I think we have to do, we just articulate have to clearly that articulate that, that we have to keep a track for what we're offsetting revenues that were at the central office that because the net costs were passed along to the districts before and right. we now have to show that in this budget. But where do we where does that where is that apparent to to voters? Because if I look at this, you know, I don't see like twenty I understand I understand, I understand kind of where it is, but I don't see the twenty nine to thirty three comparison. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if people are So I think that's when we talk about how we want to present the budget. I get so right now I said I want to talk to you about what you see here for this part of the budget, I think there's going to be companion documents that you're going to, that right. this that you're going to want to recommend to the merge board that they put in there. That I'm hoping we'll have to get that narrative written in the next narrative or some sort of 
there might be some sort of small spreadsheet that shows that I could almost see, you know, well, how does this come in and where was it before and where is it now um, to, to explain why there's a $4.5 million change, or 4.4, Lori? Something like that. Change. I'm doing it without watching my numbers and coming down. And then I, I know you talked about this at the last meeting, or maybe it was before that, but these, this sort of increase, decrease column. Um, I guess we're just looking at that on a system-wide basis and just... Mm -hmm. it, it's a format that we've had before. I understand, I get yeah. it. I'm just, you know, yeah. confirming for my own sake. Yeah. And Bill did have me fill in in the budget 19 the same comparative, so it is apples to apples. Okay. So we increased the $4 million in both years for comparative purposes. Okay. It's $4.4 .4 million, though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I just want to double check. Yeah. I mean, personally, I, it's a roll-up of all of our existing budgets, so there's not a lot to, like... I know, but it's not, because it, I think the roll-up is 29. And then and then you, but, you're ending in the, expen the state expenditure, so that's where... That, and, and, you know, that's... I get it. No, yeah, I know, I know you do, but, uh, but that's where the... Um, so can you explain it for the... For people that don't get, like, when I see this already, like, yeah. I see it when, when it was spelled out. Yeah. But but right now, when I see it, both, uh, if this is where the voters are getting, yeah. where where do, where do, so that's where what I'm saying. We're gonna, say the formula, where so I think, what I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to have an explanation of the, I think there's going to need to be an explanation that I can see, usually in most of, let me hand these out, yeah. and maybe this will help. So this is, I'm handing, if you get this one, it's just the U32. Yeah. I'm going to have you use, because I didn't have enough of them when I went out there to drive. I have the other towns, remember we sent these out to the local budget vote, and the second part is U32. So I'm going to have you turn, turn to that. So just take one and pass it around. I'll put two over there. Yeah, I mean, you can take and look at the second half of what's coming around so you each have one. So I'm just, I'm going to hold that question for a second, Chris. Don't, okay. don't lose it, but let's talk about how we present information to the voters, and this might help us answer your question. So when we look at, when we give a report in previous years about what, when we present the budget, remember we usually do it in a town report. This year we had to do it in this one. So if you open up to the first page, there is a report from the board. I don't know if we're going to have that, but just I want to, I'm, I'm literally going to walk you through this so we know what each page is, and then we can talk about where we want to do things. The next page is the warning. I think you're going to want the warning for June 25th, and the merge board's going to want the warning, okay? The next page, yeah. if you go to the next page for U32, this treasury reports is something that U32 had to do. It, it's... And in, in the if you flip your you're gonna see that on page eighteen in the if you've got the combined. And then for the combined, we had to put the we have a student enrollment projection. We just do that for U32. I don't know if that's something we want to do for the merge district. We have it. Then you start getting the fund balance. We don't have a fund balance, we're starting with zero. Okay. Am I going too fast? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you get into the summaries of changes. We showed you a summary of change last meeting. Okay. We didn't give you one in this report. We, we should put one together with it. But we have a summary of changes. And that's where we would show those. We'd show, we'd show something. You're used to seeing just something just like that. We gave you one last meeting. Yeah. Okay. That isn't changing. Then where it says U32 detailed budget is what you have right here that's in this packet okay so that goes from page seven or page sorry 22, 22 thank you Vera all the way through page uh, through page 11 on the U32 and page 26 okay I don't know if we have this which is this WCSU budget allocation kind of explains what services you get from this, that the individuals districts got from the central office. That's combined within the budget. That was in our last board packet. That was in our last board yeah. packet. We gave you something that. like that. 
And then we showed you some Washington Central information budget, which I don't think would be in this next one out, but those are things in there. So that's what we're going to have to decide on. And I think this is not going to be just tonight conversation. It's probably going to be a conversation for a little while of how we put things into the budget. But if I were going to go back to that narrative, I would see that opening page be, Chris, what you were asking about. How did we get to a history of how we got to the budget we're presenting mm -hmm. and an explanation? And I could see there being a little table that showed, hey, they total 29, but because of accounting rules that we're required to follow, we've got to show what, before we only transferred the net cost of Washington Central, we have to show the gross cost. So there was a revenue increase of 4.4 million, therefore the overall budget went up. For, you know, 4.4 million. You'd see the equating of that. And that, that would be somewhere, I think, right up front with a history of, I'm going to go right back to the, if it, you know, my draft that I'll give to the board to approve, would go right back to the August Executive Committee meeting that said, as we were preparing for this, the plan was to roll up all the budgets. You know, I, I might even do a table if you guys thought it was a good idea. And I'm looking for suggestions, because Laurie and I have been talking about this. Uh, Here's what the, each local budget was. Here's what the total is. And, and you know, just to get to help people walk through that. <coughs> right. um, yeah. yeah. If I might make a suggestion. Yeah. I know this is um, my favorite my favorite um, chart. Yeah. When it's divided uh, up. I think it's I think it's really good and really useful, and it has just the right sort of degree of resolution for um, not just for you know myself as a board member, but I think also for for voters. If something along these lines can be incorporated, it's it's um, it's sort of one okay, admittedly long page, but um, if it were at a field <coughs> or something, bless you. I, I think it would be really helpful in giving the, the bird's eye view. So um, so that's why we gave you the first budget we did last week that showed you each school. Mm -hmm. So I you know I think that's one of the things you have to this week should talk about and then the merge board should make a decision on is do you want something that does that that kind of puts them together. The the you know what I what I worry about with that is the confusion of the four point of how the revenues and expenditures come in with bringing in the Washington Central budget? Because only the net has been charged to the on on in this yeah, in this chart. Yeah. But it's it's potentially doable with in with the gross. Yeah. I'm gonna look my colleague right down there. That's the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a no, short window to so, not make yeah. a mistake because I'm yeah. a perfectionist. It's okay. Just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, Lori is the expert on accounting codes and the gap generally acceptable procedures for and handbook too. So when she says to me, "Hey," or her auditor says through her or to me, "We got to do something this way," that's where I take my advice from. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I I just um, you know this was a great uh, creation. And I think it's it's worth building on because when people look at this, immediately they can start sort of seeing things and understanding how how things fit together. Um, and they it's the density of information um, at a again at a, re, at a level of resolution yeah. that, that is. See what that has on, and I think it's useful for board members. And I'm not sure, and you tell me, you guys tell me how much it's useful for the public, but is, you know, the, the percentage of the different overall budgets. And I think that that's something good to talk about at the board level, but I'm not, I don't know what that does for the voter, where the one that we showed you, the first version that we showed you last week, showed you the overall that's coming from each budget and kind of shows how that got built together. I don't know if you have more to add. I was just going to say that I think this year we were thinking that people are confused yeah. and less is more. So mm -hmm. if we gave them numbers that they were familiar with and then this town report type of thing isn't a document that can't change in the future, we may want to add 20 more pages, I don't know. 
But we were honestly thinking, what, what is it that the voters need in the future to put together budgets and to support the budgets? Mm -hmm. The format is not stagnant. It would be evolving. Mm -hmm. So just in the spirit of not confusing people any further, they've already voted on all the budgets once. Yeah, yeah. And what could we give them that's minimal this year to keep it going and go forward and then yeah. have the Finance Committee work toward future reports? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Laura. You explained it so much more that we were trying to take use the work of since all the budgets been adopted once. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's why I was answering Chris the way I was. Of, let's show how we, those have been adopted. This is where we're at. Why is the number different? Here's the accounting reasons for it to be different. It doesn't change the overall tax rate. We can show. I think concluding with that, right. yeah, and showing mm -hmm. why it doesn't, right, is, is because otherwise you're going to keep out the same way. I added up all the individual budgets and it's this, and now you're, yeah, now you're trying to pass something that's much yeah, higher. That's much and, higher. you know, that's one of the things that, uh, well, Dave, you tried to do the best you could out of the last meeting. You could read that article that was in the Times Argus as the increase was due to the expenditures coming in that haven't been there, if you misread that article. Mm -hmm. And Dave tried to be as thorough as he could to explain that. But I, I had a couple people come to me and say, hey, you could read this a couple different ways. And really. Yeah. And if something can be misread, it, it will be. be. <laughs> That's right. I learned that one. Yeah, I agree. I think keeping it simple such that it these budgets have passed. This is the accounting reason that the number looks different, but it's not affecting tax rates is what people care about. Mm -hmm. I guess one, one thing I might suggest <clears throat> along the lines of the, or in terms of the report is that um, it seems like this board ought to draft that front section because given the timing. So thank you. That's what I was going to suggest you that either the next meeting on the 9th or the 15th that we bring you a mocked up report because uh, I, I that you know as I asked the last meeting was it's not so much the budget it's how we present it that we really need some feedback from this group about what should that look like so we have that ready to go well that's even better than what I was actually suggesting I think that's a great idea um, but I, I was really more referring just to the narrative piece at the front that Adrian essentially wrote for this particular report, the board chair usually does. Um, and I guess the board chair of the new board will really have to put their name on it, but they're going to have very little time to possibly come to grips with or write about the budget. So yeah. maybe, maybe we should provide that along with yeah. you know, supporting yeah. documentation and our recommendation for the budget. I think anyone would be honored to sign their name. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not volunteering to draft it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, he was talking. I know who's drafting it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be up for edits, but I think I'm the one drafting it. It's going up for edits. I was going to volunteer someone else on the board. <laughs> I think that's that's sitting in my. I mean, fair enough. You know, yeah, it, it, it's so. going to be more a historical. How do we get yeah. to where we are today? Mm -hmm. I think, I think, you know, your suggestion about including the explanation in the narrative, I would suggest possibly, just for the sake of transparency, even putting that part in old face. Absolutely. Because, yeah, I think because it, it is the same change that, change that, doesn't, that, doesn't that people might trip I mean, on. We'll just say, look, here is the right. reason. I mean, what we would show that um, isn't in this, in the Washington, in the U32 report, but Laura and I have been, you know, we're going to get to an overall education tax rate. Yeah, that's what we have to do. That's if you look at the individual tax rates. For you, if you have one that has both an elementary and a um, U32, if you have one of those towns, you're going to see it has an educational tax rate in there. We're, gonna, we're not going to have a history of it. We're the first year, mm -hmm. but we're going to have an educational tax rate calculation. Um, but going back to uh, a point that Lindy made just a moment ago, that tax rates won't change. They actually will. They will change. Yeah. yeah they will but change. But this, this, four, this four million or whatever yeah, isn't we, we changing. Yeah, that's what I meant. I got it. Right, yeah. Right. 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 That's like, You see something, if Vera can hold this, hold this up, she moves to it. But if you see something that looks like that, you remember seeing this tax rate that had history? Mm -hmm. It has all this history in it and everything with CLA. And up in the top left-hand corner, it has what's the end spending <coughs> per people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
which is a calculation because you've got to combine U32 and the elementary schools in each of the town. So we'll be doing something like that. We don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. Right. And, and Lori would not want me to bear down right here. <laughs> but we're going to get to something that has some sort of educational tax rate information. Like, you had given us those charts before with mm -hmm. the budget information development. Mm -hmm. do, so even just that upper part has the... I have, I have a, an idea. Okay. I just need to give you some samples. So, so basically your suggestion, Bill, is that you would come to the next meeting with as much of a mocked up town report as you can manage to yeah. cobble together in yeah. that amount of time, right? Yeah. Is that the we'll get you a mocked up piece, but we want to, yeah. we'd like to get to a place where if we're feeling good with this budget, then we'll, this is what spurs us to do everything else. Right. So if this is the budget, then we'll go start producing the other supporting documents. So do board members have any questions about the budget or changes they want to suggest? I, I'm assuming not, but no, I just we trust you. I throw that out there. Because so. again, this is just rolled up. You know, the, the budgets we've already approved locally, right? So. Would this be your recommended budget? I'm being a little bold right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we should have a motion to that? Well, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, do we need to vote on it tonight? You I, don't know, I don't know you need to vote on it, but I kind of like just a feeling from the table. I would say the sense of the board is that, yes, this is well, the You know, given your, the, the um, comments we heard earlier about the educational benefit issue, um, is there something? I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go into that right now. I just okay. don't know the answer. I mean, just to that because if, if there's yeah. need, um, I think I, you know, we were talking about the Ed Benefit Review, which the professional developments had in the past two days, and there's been some good ahas for those who weren't at the table here for the executive committee. Uh, but I, I don't think we're going to be able to spend something up in two weeks to really know. So I think good. Okay. I, I don't think it. I'm not so sure it's extra money as it is in reconfiguring what we have. Okay. Yeah. I think it's within here. Interesting. So I think the answer to your question is okay. we'll, yes. We'll pen, pending a formal, right, form, motion, pending a formal motion, but you know, Laura and I were we were talking just before the meeting. We said, hey, if we can get a really good sense that we're solid, we can start creating other things because they just do, they all kind of yeah. move off this bottom line. The sense of the board is that you are solid. Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Okay. Should we go to three point two? Three point two. I have an anticipation. I'm going to be very short here because Lori is the expert on this. Um, but she and I want to give all credit due to Lori for. Um, Everything that's in here about the cash flow from last time that we talked about, the, the, I'll just start with, I guess we, I'm going to give the big announcement, is we think Lori, through all her work with the lending institutions, thinks there's a way through for cash flow with a past budget. That's the caveat right now. So would you like the information first and then go through this chart? Because um, I can give you the good news. So, um, so the good news is um, we were kind of um, ahead of the curve out of the gate with the bank. And so after your meeting, um, we had the bank um, meet with us again and they reviewed the situation with legal counsel. And the opinion is that um, we could, if we have a voter approved budget on June 25th, that um, Washington Central Unified Union School District um, could borrow money for July 1, okay? Um, what would be different, um, usually we do go out to bid and we usually borrow money for July 1, but what would be different about it is due to the 30-day um, possible um, consideration for a revote, the first 30 days of a loan would, well, it's actually 25 because some of them would be in the month of June, um, would be um, what we call a line of credit. After the recension period, which would be July 26, um, then we could um, award a bid for regular arbitrage to occur, similar to what it is now. Okay? So if there isn't a successful vote, we go out to vote and the voters say no, um, then what we would have would be a line of credit until such time as a successful vote happens and the 30-day um, period has passed. 
Okay. And the line of credit is more expensive. Right. right. So from a logistical point of view, um, what I was looking at was um, we typically go out to bid. We don't award this to any one uh, bank. We have six banks in the entire state who bid on governmental banking because um, this is a special type of financing. So we go out to bid every year. Um, we ask, and if there's any new banks, and I think one just approached our office, um, then we would invite them to all bid on our borrowing and investing. Um, what I was going to suggest was that I would go out to bid a week before the vote so that the day after the vote, if it was successful, a board could approve loan documents and award the bid. That was the special meeting Bill was talking about earlier. Well, it was one of many. Uh, I was, yeah, one of many. Um, so I was going to suggest that the uh, the new board, um, the regular, whatever you want to call it, not transitional, but that they would meet on June 26 to review the situation. So we would neither either need to say, oh, the vote failed and we need lines of credit, or the vote was successful and we would authorize the bid with 25 days of a line of credit and then the rest of the days for the full year at the arbitrage. Okay. Um, when we did the budget, um, we were conservative because we knew that the feds had changed rates and tax um, rules <coughs> that were going to result in a less favorable bid this year. So I've confirmed that that's still true. It's about a quarter of a percent different than what we got last year on the net um, operating. We will not make as much interest income in the month of, of July. You're right. Um, but other than that, that's great news. Um, what you're seeing here is the actual required document that is usually completed for each school district. So this is the sum of them added up. Um, just kind of walking you through it, the total receipts and expenses need to equal the voter budget. So when Bill said, um, do you support the budget, the, you'll see the $33 million here. You see that? $33,854,000? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the formula, and I won't go into it because you could roll your eyes, is, is that um, they look at how you collect and receive money by month, and there's a certain number of months that um, after you hit that point, you cannot borrow more than that. So our highest uh, debt month is November, which would be $8.8 .8 million is the current projection. And when you look at that and you get a 5% increase to that for the prior year spending and I was told again by the legal that we could add that in using the sum of our old budgets. Um, that means we would borrow the 10 million. And then there's another formula to double check it is what I call it and it takes all the taxes assessed for the prior year at 90 percent. So you can't borrow the 16 million, um, you can only borrow the 10. Um, what would we need for the line of credit was a question Bill asked me to come prepared and it would be if it's a successful vote we'd need about 2.7 million dollars for the first month based on current spending projections. And I guess that's your um, you math to tutorial <laughs> for today. I, I wanted to, Lori, can you address the bottom line there about what will happen for tax collection? Right. We did okay. this last week, but I think it's good to, right. to just review with everyone. Right. Because it's going to require extra work of the town clerks. True. So um, what happens currently is every town um, votes their tax collection dates at town meeting. And that's when they send out their bills for both municipal and school taxes to be paid. I think you probably didn't even realize you were voting on those every year. And um, what the bank told me I needed to do because we're now a conglomerate is I needed to put in every single date that currently taxes are collected at every town added up. So some of you have like November 15th, maybe two or three towns have November 15th, but one might have November 17th. So long story short, if we um, have a successful vote on June 25th, it is highly likely, and the way that I'm seeing it, it is expected that we would be sending out two tax bills. The tax bills probably couldn't go out until around mid to end of August, and currently they go out in the month of July. So I was even talking to Sandra Ferber today just as a what if, and what we came up with was, um, for an example, would be Callis's taxes for the town um, would go out, and the taxes for the school would go out later, so that means that the date typically the money would come in might have to be moved from August to October. 
the zone affects cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. And then she was just saying, well, she needed to consider that because technically they float um, some of the school money for a month because they can, and the towns might need to borrow money. So she was thankful that we had the conversation, and I think I might call the other town clerks tomorrow and just check in on Monday. But part of that is that theirs is an earlier date, correct? True. Like yeah. The so November fifteen and March May fifteen. Right. Right. But if they use they can use the school tax collection, mm -hmm. so they don't have to go borrow money right. for right. municipal yeah. needs. Yeah. And now they're going to have to go borrow money because they won't have those school taxes. Because some people might pay early. I know it's hard to believe. Um, but I had come up with uh, <laughs> Berlin, <laughs> Callis, and Worcester were three towns that had August dates. You were right, East Montpelier has November, and Middlesex has September 20, roughly. So they might be bumped a few days. But I, I think just as a courtesy, I, I would like to call them and just kind of talk things through. But that's how it's been in the past for schools that did not have a successful school vote by June 1st. It's not just unique to us. It's, yeah. yeah, thanks, Matthew. I have this schoolboy understanding of the system where um, the tax receipts were somehow transported into the education fund where you know they were put in a big blender and then came back from the education fund to the towns but it sounds as though they're going to the towns right so um, that blender actually is true um, what it is is actually a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So the state says the town must collect and give so much to the school. If the town has extra money, they give it to the state on those dates. And if they need extra money, because you're not fully funded, you right. get money from the state. Because right. you don't get the money. The town doesn't get the money. From, tell me if I'm right on this, Lord. The town doesn't get the money from the state until they've gone and collected taxes. In the school, school the school the doesn't school. get the money, <coughs> right? We still we're what we still call a receiving town. I know yeah. back in the day it was paying towns and receiving towns. Yeah. All of our towns still receive more money than the taxes that are collected at the town. So we receive state aid three times a year at each town uh, school district currently. Right, because non-residential taxes go straight to the state. True. Okay. So they take the blender and give you part of it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I was I was in the same place, Scott, and I was like, Bill, I need to give you a tutorial about how the cash yeah. actually flows, not how it seems to flow. Yeah, we we need sort of like um, uh, education spending rock mm -hmm. with a, a song and a little kind of <laughs> tax. Check the wanders. <laughs> so let me understand the towns that normally collect their education tax before October, or I don't know before what, mm -hmm. they are going to be on the hook to have to borrow money to spend more money to go the, into debt. I would use the word might. 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 It depends on the town. I mean, your town. Well, I'm talking said, about our town. True. Yeah. Your town told me she might. Right, but it's still it's might. True. She said she's going to relook at her numbers and relook at, and that's why I think I should give them a heads up so that each town could could look at their arbitrage because they might have to do one of these sheets like I did. Yeah. Okay. And some of them do that already. Yep. Um, it's all due also to um, delinquent taxes is another mm -hmm. component. That's true. So I, I can't speak to everything for every town, but I yeah. Yeah. So Sandra said she was going to run one of these sheets to see how it would look if she didn't have the school cash available to, to use. Yeah. Did the town clerk mention anything about compensation for for an additional mailing and time to do that? Um, what people might not realize is that the state gives every town, I think it's a one or one and a half percent compensation for doing this mm -hmm. already. So whether it be separate or together, the state gives every town compensation for doing school tax collection. Mm -hmm. You're doing all kinds of new things. But, mm -hmm. but, that's, <laughs> you mean, but, do but it still? they're used to doing it once. <laughs> like last year, the, yeah. the, last year the um, income sensitivity adjustments weren't ready by July 1, and the town, several towns had to do a mm -hmm. second round, and the state compensated the towns 
for sending an amended tax bill. They did? Yeah. Okay. See, I'm not told about that. I just see the formula where they get an off the top percentage. It's on the sheets that I see. I think it's like 20000 or 30000 that the towns get for so doing tax collection. So if our town had been forward thinking and never mind. <clears throat> I mean, it, well, uh, it, this is, the, the state won't reimburse us for a second tax bill, catalyst I'm talking about, mm -hmm. because the first tax bill will simply be the town tax. It has nothing to do with education. The next bill is the one that will be the education tax, correct? True. But I think it's a good question to ask. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm sure Sandra will get right on that. Yeah. Talk to her about it. Tomorrow I'll see if she could... Get some kind of special well, I'm not bill. saying you should raise the double check. <laughs> <laughs> they get the flat rate. And give them another postage reimbursement or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who would pay that if the state was willing to do that? We'll come out of the education fund, of course, and still jip us more out of our tax. <laughs> um, so did I cover that? Where you understand it? I guess I just want to double check. I think that was all I had to say. Was, did I miss something, Bill? No, I think you, well, from what you and, the, you and I have had, I think, conversation every day since mm -hmm. a week goes past Tuesday on this topic, and so I feel like I'm not a good judge of does everyone understand around the table, so you, I would almost, Matthew, you might want to just ask if anybody has any further questions or needs more explanation or plenty willing to give it, I just feel like I'm too deep into judge where you were, Lori. Well, let's assume I've asked that question. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have one question. Um, these total taxes assessed prior year, mm -hmm. um, I, the 18, 000, 18 million rather, uh, 600,000 is from the prior year. True. And the 16 million, 743. Is 90% of that. Is 90%, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the formula that's required on this. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you say again exactly why the tax rates won't be ready by? Um, so the way that education works now is if you have a voter approved budget by June 1st, mm -hmm. we send that information to the state. Yeah. The state had, doesn't process it um, until July 1st because of the 30 day recension for some towns. Now your towns used to do the vote in March, so we were already past the 30 days. So on June, July 1st, in that scenario, then they would then calculate the taxes and send it to the towns. So typically the towns would hear about it around July 15th. They would have the select board meet, uh, approve the tax rate, and then send out the bills. So that's what's different, is that whole date system gets kicked down the road. Um, Other questions? Thanks, Lori and Bill, again, for this one. This one's all She's the one on this one. Thank you. Certainly, I, I, for one, am happy not to be talking about how to <laughs> deal with the, the borrowing issue. So I'm glad that we like that. Um, to move to 3.3, bill 3.4, so this is purchase orders for the WCUSD. Yes, so every year about now, somewhere between April break and now, we start writing purchase orders for the following year. And they go in as July 1st, but we're starting to make commitments for things. And Laura's gonna give you, she has a laundry list in front of her, mm -hmm. I didn't copy it. Um, for things that we need to, st to do over the summer. I've been, I've been, I'm going to sign a bunch of memorandums of understanding to give you an example for staff that work our extended year services for our students that get extended, get summer services that are required in their IEP. So I have to write, I write a, an agreement that they'll get paid X amount for doing that work through the summer. That's one example of many things that Laura will go through with you. Um, that we need to start getting things so that we we do a lot of work in the summer, as you know, buildings, technology, there's a lot of things that kids still get services that we roll through the summer to get ready to start school in August. Um, 
So maybe Laura, you can go through yes. what some of those things are. So he mentioned special ed contracts like to Washington County Mental Health or Green Mountain Behavior or anyone providing services for summer programs for pretty much special education IEPs. Um, other things our staff um, put together orders of what they need for the following year. They usually get a discount if they place the order early and then the order comes in over the summer and you know it's a lot, lifetime in processing. So all of our teachers usually are putting together purchase order requisitions. Um, we have technology items, so, you know, equipment um, that they get ready for staff to be implemented and used. Um, we have things just as simple as electricity, phone bills, our WAN line bills, uh, software licensing renewals. Um, this year we're required to do a phone system update, so there'll be a bid and a bid award on that. Um, let's see what else. I have capital projects. Um, the U32 track's going on right now, but it's going to cross entities. Um, and then other capital right, projects, right, yeah, where, right, like at the Berlin, the paving. Boiler, the paving. The paving, the paving, paving I think, things. might get done ahead of the 30th, but I'm not sure. It's It'll pretty close. Well. But yeah. we're taking everything in, and we usually sort it into two piles. Does yeah. the work begin before June 30? If it is, then it's the current entities. Does the work happen July 1? Then it would be the new entity. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, for teachers taking courses, it's in the union agreement um, that they're entitled to take summer classes, and a lot of them sign up, and their classes might start July 2nd, and they'll need a purchase order to secure their spot for some things. And another example is we've um, streamlined a lot of clock, uh, like the cleaning of area rugs and classrooms. And so we have one outside provider that all the maintenance folks got together with, and this one provider schedules the leak and comes in and cleans all those area rugs, uh, the, the cleaning of the air ducts. And so I, when I was actually, for the meeting we were up at Cal's, Chris Suller was asking me, he said, Bill, how soon can I start cutting POs so I can be scheduling people to come in the summer to do the work that we need to do? And I said, I'll be asking that for the transition board, but not this week. But we're, we're, we already knew the issue was there. Um, we, mm -hmm. has a big brain. And we talked about this with the leadership team, too. Mm -hmm. The leadership team was concerned about the education, the extended year services, and the professional development because mm -hmm. of what they're planning to go forward with. So I have designed a new purchase order form for the new entity with different ship to addresses. That's the technical thing that would need to happen. So it's ready to be printed and um, utilized. Um, but what I think we're really seeking for is approval. Um, from this board to go forward with purchasing using the new forms and the new entity. Mm. <coughs> Starting July 1st. Or the, In fact, it, the, dates of, of, right, yeah. the dates of service for items that are dated uh, July 1 forward. Mm -hmm. So we need to make a motion that we need to do an action? Or I make a motion that yeah. the purchase orders for July 1 be okayed under the Washington Central UUSD. Thank you. I think she got it right. That's a good one. That, that funding will come from the budget. It's 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 or sorry, no more okay. Yep. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, <clears throat> I think it's a good idea. I, I just am hoping that we not order too much stationery with WCUUSD on it, because that is just an abomination. <laughs> um, I think that there's every likelihood that the, that that name will will be looked at at some okay. point. Yeah. Um, there's another WCUUSD at the same time, True. which makes it, yeah. yeah. I had to spell it all out. Yeah. Washington Central, because there's a Windsor Central yeah. and a Wyndham Central. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. That, that, that's so we don't abbreviate it. We spell it right out, and we yeah, have to put good. on our tax ID number. Um, so that the sales are tax exempt. So it's unique to us. Okay. Thank don't, you. Don't order a million sheets, I guess. Yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's all electronic. Yeah, it's yeah, all electronic. electronic. We don't, we don't, we don't yeah. buy any yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's all 
to uh, 3.4, previously 3.3, so <laughs> articles and yeah. yeah. So for um, staff members for professional development, you need to be able to afford to uh, that covered under our funds? Yes, I've actually, I'm okay. spending, what I think yeah. I'm doing yeah. is spending, yeah. I just want to, can can I this is important, Chris asked me a good question, it's important for all of you to hear, for your local board, for the boards that are under right now. I'll give you an example. I was given a, I sign off on all course requests for any teacher in the system. I'm the final piece in that after the principals. Um, and then the, um, I was given a request just this past week that a course starts like, let's say the 15th of May, somewhere in May, I don't remember exactly. And it goes until July, to the July 20th. We're charging that to this year's accounts. Okay, so it's going to hit. So that type of stuff I'm signing off on right now. Work, something, if we're doing cleaning that's happening, and we're going so late to school right now, we're having to put things off. But if it's something that's going to happen in June, start in June, we're signing off on it to this year's budget. Two reasons. One, get the capital funds, get the reserve funds, use as much of those as we can. We're coming forward with zero, so we know that most of the local but just want to put those into capital reserves, which I'm totally supportive of, but to, let's use that money. We're not trying to get bigger. We will come to the board if we're going to expend past the budgeted authority. I would come to you. I never spend anything that's past, that's in that fund reserve, general fund balance. I'm just trying not to add to it. Mm -hmm. So if we have a $3.2 million budget for a school, we're trying to spend $3.2 million for that school. And we also concurred with the auditor. If the service starts this year, it's this year. If it starts next year, it's next year. It's kind of simple. <laughs> He's like, okay, that's how it's working. So otherwise, it's it's an audit management. It's, it's this year's work. So. Okay. Okay. Two point four. Are those agreement? Okay. Four looks like you. Oh, so uh, in the packet was the the all one. Uh, and I added, uh, I talked to Bill uh, today, and he's going to talk to Chris Lippold. We uh, had sent, we, this draft was missing, you know, we had said that we needed to discuss and create a policy uh, for school choice. So it's shown here, but I'm not the lawyer, so I just put this little things here as a reminder for everybody of what we talked at our last transitional board meeting, it's on, the second, on the second page. Bill is going to talk to Chris Uppel and see what it will take to draft amendments to avow it and do the warning. Right, right. well, yeah, is, I, I have a meeting scheduled with Chris tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, via the phone to, I think we're, like, the amendments that he's he's already he's looked okay. at, he doesn't need to go do more work on that. Yeah. What I'm looking to get from Chris is the amendments, like, I feel like we still have to come to resolution on Article 4. Tell me if I'm wrong here, Flora. Yeah, that's what it says here. And we have to get the wording right for recommending a policy. So that might just be a recommendation and not an article of agreement. That I don't know how that... I have talked with Chris a little bit more on that. Okay. And then Chris, I want to do, big things I want to do for Chris, because this board, you could do this without the merge board, mm -hmm. is adopt a warning to go out. So I want Chris to public to write that warning. So it gets everything that you want. If you say these are the amendments, that that is reflected in a warning that's correct, you can go out to be on the same day as the 25th so we don't have multiple elections going to try to help our town clerks at least a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so the hope would be that we vote on June 25th. Along with the articles. On articles, along with the budget. The budget. That makes yeah. sense because people yeah, um, get fewer and fewer people. So obviously, you know, there, the only thing that I'm saying there is that in Article 4, this article is not ready until the new board reaches a consensus on the final. Yeah. 
So yeah. that is but because we have the new board, you know, because we have not the new board, we can do it. Originally, we thought it was the the new board that had to say, they had the ultimate say, and we were going to transfer to them. But it would be us that can decide. Just to clarify, are you are you saying that that article can't be included in the warning until the new board? That's what I'm clarifying right now. So you can, you, can put, you can put that article on the warning because this, this the transition board mm -hmm. or the new board can call for the election for the amendments. Yeah. For the amendments. And you can, so this board can decide or you could give it to the merge board to decide. There's still room to do that. I want to have the warning ready to go either way. Mm -hmm. You, right now for article, you don't have a conclusion by this, and by anybody. Any, any body. Yes. No, not <laughs> one yeah. word, two words. Um, on Article 4. So if you come to the conclusion, then we would write that up and put it on the warrant. Right. You could decide you didn't want to come to a conclusion on that, and you That's didn't do it, and we do the other ones that have already been done. Yeah. It's up to you. I understand, yeah. I need a body, whether it be this one or the merge board, to right. propose something to the voters. I think it's great to ask Chris to prepare the warning so that we have it in that format. Yeah. I, you know, they would sort of work on what a ballot would look like. Mm -hmm. It's great. Um, my only purpose was to clarify that we can't put Article 4 on that warning or ballot unless and until somebody, as you say, takes a decision that allows it to be an up and down, up or down vote by the electorate. On, on right, and then I would transfer what your decision is of what you'd like to Chris and have him write it right the way there. it should be written. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm waiting for someone to make a decision. Yeah. So part of the reason of putting it here is that we're going to talk today about you know future agenda items. So we, we would have to vote. I don't think we can resolve it tonight. But we would have to just agree that if we want to do this as the transitional board, we will you know, there's just two options. I would try to not move us away of that conversation that we already had had because a lot of the same people are sitting at the table. You can review what we said before, but we're really just looking at a, either a town approval or an extended moratorium to come to some consensus on, the, you know, on that, that decision. So knowing that, we have to figure out what that amount of time means for the next meeting, knowing all the other things that mm -hmm. We have. In the, only, the only thing that I see, Lori and I know we'll be bringing you at least a Beamers action item. I don't know if this helps. You can tell me to be quiet. <coughs> I'll be bringing you, we'll be bringing you a draft of what something like this might look like. Um, and um, Lori, what else am I'm I going to pull my list. <laughs> oh, yeah, go to your list. Which list is it? Okay, this one. Um, if there's any bidding awards for like computer technology, anything like that, that might be a bid that's over right. fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, we gotta be ready. And at some point, the uh, new board um, or this board would have to discuss the assumption of debt. Yeah. That's all I have on my list. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be next time. The Beamers is next time. So Beamers in the booklet is, I think, what Lori and I think we would be bringing to you from our end. Right. Well, we do, our next meeting is at the same time Eight next nine. week on the 9th. Yeah. Um, you know, we could schedule at 5.30 to 7.30 if we wanted to allow for some extra time to discuss. doesn't mean we have to use up that time, mm -hmm. just to have it. Um, and, uh, Don't yeah. we have to meet the candidates at 7? That's on the seventh. Seven That's two days. days yeah. Prior. See, every we yeah, are yeah. aware of <laughs> We want it the same day. We're trying to get a meeting every day next week. Yeah, yeah. Friday to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I would suggest we. This is sort of like the other major category of business that the transition board is supposed to deal with that we haven't yet really devoted significant time to, so it seems like we should definitely allocate that at the next for the next meeting. Is there um, for the new members here um, who weren't on the articles committee mm -hmm. that we should I think circulate um, so the prior discussions just 
what for I, educational purposes. Yeah, and what, what I did is that I think that if you if you look at the last part, it says see minutes. We have a lot of minute minutes from different meetings, but really, truthfully, the meetings from two twenty seven, three fourteen, and our last meeting really kind of summarizes those discussions. And I'm happy, you know the minutes are right on the website. I'm happy to talk to anybody, but especially the 227, we go at length in, uh, in, each, okay. in each category. Would you be willing for to ask yeah. uh, Krista to include them in the packet? Yes. For meeting for next week? Or yeah. The minutes. The minutes. The minutes. Yeah, the minutes of those days. Yeah, yeah. 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 I can send them to you and Krista already. Oh. Yeah. It's in my email that I sent you today. 227, 314, and 328. Got it. No, I just make check boxes to make sure that she might talk about mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> yes, Tom um, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> may I share a thought that um, it, it may feel like I'm throwing over the chessboard, but in reality, I'm just sort of pushing it gently to the side. Um, I've observed in the couple of meetings that we've had so far, the big, you know, yeah. district meetings, that um, the sentiment has been predominantly against the, um, the forced merger, um, you know, by as much as a two to one margin. The um, of, of the people attending these the meetings. The, the audience. The audience, right. Well, the electorate the at these meetings. Um, it, is that what others have sort of picked wait, up? So, sorry, which meetings are you talking about? That's like the, the organizational meeting. Oh, the super All kinds of meetings. Uh, uh, the yeah. organizational meetings. In particular, yeah. yeah. And the organizational the, meetings. Well, those are the ones yeah. who have been recruited and other people feel like, I'm for this, why do I need to go? I think in in fairness, a lot of people who are for something aren't out Haven't protesting. But, well, but, but this, I think that's an important point because the question is, who is going to take the trouble to show up and vote in an off-cycle election? Well, look at the last ones for the budgets, not yeah, for the people. Yeah, exactly. So um, my expectation is that it will be, once again, predominantly the same source of people. In other words, predominantly anti-forced merger um, representative Folks. sample of the, of the electorate. Um, my big concern is that um, they're going to want to vote no on something. And I don't want them to vote no on the budget, because that would really mess things up. So, um, basically, what I'm, what it, Carl knows where I'm headed with this. Um, we need something like a lightning rod that people can um, vote no on or vote yes on um, uh, to send, you know, their own message. So um, what I was thinking of doing is preserving all of this. Um, but as we were saying, Flora, since many of us are going to be, you know, our repeat offenders um, on the on the next, you know, the next incarnation of um, of this, you know, <laughs> what can I say, karmic <laughs> sleigh ride. Um, <clears throat> we save this for, for them and instead have one article that would be voted on and that article would say something like, um, be sort of self-referential, um, the electorate consents to state-ordered consolidation of Berlin, Calais, East Montpelier, Middlesex, Worcester, and U32 school districts under state-issued default articles of agreement, period. And then <clears throat> that would be the one article that would show up on the ballot, and voters would be able to say either, 
yeah, I agree with this, let's do that, or no, or hell no. <laughs> There's no box for hell no. But, um, but this would, you know, at least have that, um, that sort of safety valve effect. So that presumably they would vote no on to make the statement, to make a clear statement, and um, vote yes in favor of what I hope will be considered the responsible course of action to approve a budget for this combined district. Well, that um, seems very confusing. I think we already saw yeah. with the original votes that they were supportive of the budget. Yeah. I don't think we need to give them um, a, a release valve. I, I think it's a, I think that's something that doesn't carry any weight. There's no reason to muddy the water and put that on. I, I don't see the value in it. I don't see the need. Um, I respect the, the thoughtfulness of you know, considering what people are thinking, clearly. Mm. But um, I think we've already seen people support the budgets. They, they supported the individual school budgets. And, but, and um, these numbers? And if we are, are publicizing the same, the same we're the same. putting them together and they're being distributed by what schools need. Right. But it's, it's the, a different, different political vote, though. Yeah. It's yeah. a different political vote um, because, you know, there, there'll still be folks who are. I, I have a couple of other different, different concerns about it, um, and this is my first time hearing it, so I'm just sort of yeah. reacting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think my first concern would be that I'm not sure your assumption about how the electorate will act when <coughs> faced with those two questions is necessarily um, obvious. Because I think if, if you're presented with a question and say, you're going to vote, no, I don't consent to this, and then be like, yeah, sure, let's spend $33 million on the schools. I'm not sure that those actually are logically follow. It seems like if you're given the opportunity to say, no, I dissent mm -hmm. from this, and, and, I'm, and I'm not going to agree to this budget either, is the more likely sort of outcome. Seems like they connect. People well, involved. So that's one concern. Sure. Yeah. Um, the second concern that I would have is, um, and I am really concerned about this in general, is the, the near very prevalent rhetoric about how this, our school system cannot succeed in um, merging, that it just is impossible, that um, none of us want it and we're again it, you know? And to, to provide a, a sort of um, opportunity for people to express that via a vote which will have no material effect, it's only then real effect will be to cement a kind of um, bitterness and discontent and determination to undermine um, something which has to happen. Um, but, but do you think it will be any different if they, if some kind of possibility of expression is not enough? It but, will just go underground, potentially, and become seething resentment instead of, um, instead of, yeah, I got that out of, out of my system. Now, we've got, a, we've got a hard job ahead. Let's just do it. Well, I think it's a question worth discussing. I mean, I, I think the, my sense is that the resentment is already seething. Um, I'm not sure, you know, again, what if you sort of vote on, a, on an item like that, how does that um, expiate or exercise or um, provide solace to those whose resentment is already seething? I just, I don't really see it. Um, and I guess the last thing that I, interesting point that you brought up that sort of was maybe um, tangential to your point, but that seems to me interesting is that it's likely that, that probably likely that very few voters will come out mm -hmm. on, on, for this election. Um, and yeah, I don't know what, I guess it, that sort of, your know, turnout is what it is, I guess, but I mean, that just makes me uncomfortable in general. And I guess for the articles of agreement, like I wonder if like, you know, we, um, how 
comfortably we feel about having two and a half percent of the electorate possibly, you know, voting on the not to glorify it, but the constitution of the you know the new school district or something. Um, oh, but again, that's that's sort of aside <coughs> from your main sort of idea. Yeah, but that would be that would be potentially an objection to having any articles of agreement voted on. That's but, what I meant by bringing yeah. it up. Yeah. 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 I, I see the articles. Uh, two things. I see the articles of agreement as providing that valve that you were saying. You know, give it. This is yeah. Okay. There were people that disagree, and they had to you know go ahead with the forest merger. These are some draft. I know they're they're minimum. They do have two articles that very much says what you're trying to say in the dissent. There's in those two articles that we're including. And, and that one, those two, we can kind of do them really without creating confusion. And, and second, I see it as our responsibility, and, and, and you and us, and third, you know, we, I see it as our responsibility getting the good word out in why it's important to vote for this vote. You know, we can't tell them how to vote, but why it's important to vote. And, you know, you know your, your group, you know, I mean, we, each of us have a you know, to be able to bring people to vote and say, you know, this is important, please show up and, and vote, and this is why it's important to vote. And you know what I'm trying, you know what I'm yeah. trying to say. It's, yeah. it, we, we, you know, you have a great, so if you think that you know, you know people that have that sentiment, that, and I know you do, you know, like how, uh, how, do, how do you bring them to the table in this very important, crucial moment? that we are right now. Because anything that we're doing right now doesn't mean that you, the lawsuit is not going on, right? We, 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 need, we need this vote, <laughs> right? So can I just give you a point of view? Oh, sorry. So we'll go to our hand, though. Um, I, I, part of me likes the idea, but the other part makes uh, what I've been thinking about before Scott even brought this up is that when you have all these things written on the ballot and somebody who's already cranky gets the ballot <laughs> and says, what is all this? I don't want it. Um, I think right now our job, this is for me, is to make sure we get the people out and make sure they understand that for the kids and for you know, we're a business, and the best part of a business is their employees. So we need to support our employees to get that budget voted so that we can take care of them. And so getting people out to vote is important to me to get that budget passed so we can take care of those people. And I don't think many of the people who are against um, the merger want to hurt our employees, myself included. I think everybody at this table. So I, I think they're two different issues, really. And I, I, I think my job um, is to make sure this budget, budget gets voted. And what happens with the articles happens with the articles. Uh, personally, uh, I don't know what I would do. But I would feel good being able to vote no on something, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, and I would feel good to vote yes on something that was really, really important. Um, and and I, I disagree with you, Matthew, that people think the merger is impossible and we can't do it. I disagree with that, that all those people think that. I think the big, big issue is the debt and the property transfer. Mm -hmm. And I think if that gets taken care of, I think this district can get itself together and do a good job. That's what I feel. So just a point of information, I think some of you know this, and I'm just not sure everyone knows it, um, that each, each amendment will be voted on. It's not a slate. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be combined with what's in the draft articles of agreement, so it will read as that amended article will read. So 
you would have to see, so when you're touching one of the existing articles that would be voted on, you have to have all that, and all that will be on the ballot. So the ballot will get quite lengthy, and there will be a vote for each one. But so just it just them as it is on this draft. It has to be amended. If, if, if it's one more amending, amended. it won't follow. It, it, no, it won't follow. It would be what the new article is. Shall <laughs> article no four read yeah. as? And Article 4 will be all printed there. Yeah, and all, all Article, Article 4 will be printed there. Do you know, Bill, does it, does it have the original and then the new for comparison? Or I do just, not think so, but I just yeah, don't know. And I, David might know from watching Barry. I didn't watch Barry, but what they did with their amendments. But um, do you know, David, how they did they do the ballot? ballot? They were more surgical about it than the new I mean, they didn't go as deep as you want. I mean, they only, did, uh, they only changed the board composition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's why we need Chris, because he's going to write what the warning looks like and what the ballot is going to look like. But from the conversations he and I have had, you need the article. Yeah, I had understood that amended. the board composition mm -hmm. was like he wrote it. I, 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 but I'm not sure. From look, that conversation. I want, it, I want to have, that's why I want him to draft a warning so you can all see it, and a ballot so you can all see it. And you may get to the point from seeing that it's either too complex or let's go with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, makes sense. So I think you're you're you're, you're going to learn more as you see those things. Yeah, which we would ha hopefully yeah, have next week. Or is that too soon? To I think that's too soon. I think you'll have it by the fifteenth. Okay, but not the ninth. Yeah. But it's in the fifteenth when we have to make the decision. Yeah. Sorry. So we I just don't see Chris having time. I know what he's <coughs> he's got a lot of he's got a lot of other client yeah. work. <laughs> We would probably have to decide next week on what we're going to do so he can get right. Get it to Chris and then we'll get back. Yeah. I'm trying no, to get it set. You're going to get him what we have already. Mo well, for it's, it's Article except 4. For article four. It, it's Article 4, but he's, I've got to get him ready so he's starting to reserve time right yeah. now. Okay. That was just a thought. I think there's many in Berlin that um, would have that same thought process as what Dorothy was saying with just being able just to say no on on ballot. And I just I can picture <laughs> so many of my neighbors that are going to vote on absentee ballots that might not know all the information that if they could just vote no on something. To make them feel better. Mm -hmm. As I know that doesn't seem like the sensible thing, but I can just so picture just knowing. I guess the question is then would voting on everything make them feel absolutely wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's one do, of my sort of questions just, is like they could just say no to the whole thing. Like everything they see, they just say no to it, you know. Yeah, well, but I think it's our job, or if I'm on the board, um, if I or it's your job. All of our jobs, even if I'm not on the board, to say we need you to pass this budget to take care of our staff and our mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. and I think that's our job. To take care of our communities. A, it's not. It, it, it affects everybody. Not it's not yeah. just. Yeah. It's. Yeah. But we got to keep the business <laughs> in business. Yeah. 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 I guess I just want to clarify, Dorothy, that my really my question comes less as from a, 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 about the. Um, the rhetoric piece, less as a board member and more as a constituent, um, because um, the new board isn't going to be working with me, it's going to be working for me. Um, so it's kind of a question that I have actually for next Tuesday's forum is, you know, a lot of the you know folks with respect who are running for the board are quite, you know, have been staunch and vocal um, anti-merger advocates representing our constituents I, I understand mm -hmm. but, but nonetheless are running to serve on board um, which will have to champion you know the school system uh, as it is constituted and you know do their utmost for its success and I have you know great confidence in the candidates in this room and elsewhere that that's what Thank they will do. That. I really do. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I, I worry about the disconnect. I worry about the, the kind of idea or the oft-expressed attitude that, um, you know, this is um, terrible, bad, we don't consent to it, 
um, it's you know all these things are sort of becoming a self fulfilling prophecy in a way of um, negativity, I guess, or something. And I, I don't really know how to express it well. But that is a concern that I have. I must say. It, it's interesting. I, I see it more as a kind of truth and reconciliation process. Um, so. Sorry. But anyway, um, yeah, I I hear you though. So, um, in terms of just just thinking in lines of authority here, um, the transition board can warn the articles of articles of agreement. We can. Um, does that mean the new board cannot? No, they could. They could too, right? They could too. It could be yeah. either one, what I said to you. Or both. That's why. I'm wondering if it can be both. Is there anything that prohibits uh, both? I think then what you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna confer, you're going to have confusion in an election. So I wouldn't I, recommend I, it. I, I, they want it twice, there'd probably be two ballots. So so you, right. Yeah. Right. I'm just, just yeah. wondering. I mean, my, my sort of, <clears throat> I think what I said before was that I hope it would be that the new board would do it so that it would all be on one ballot. Like the, mm -hmm. the budget and the, because I think if we want it separately, somehow it has to be separate. I've had fast, Chris. I, I don't even know. I have a sort of. I think the people are so confused now. If we did that, they just throw up their hands and <laughs> not vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I just go back to my point of I just need a body, whether it's this body or the next one. I understand. Want to go forward. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Heard loud and clear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I just want to be clear. We will, we will make a decision at some point either to warn it or to recommend to the new board that they warn it. Or not to. Or not to. That's a third. Yeah, point. I, that's true. That's right. The, the board will do what it will do. Mm -hmm. So, Matthew, yeah. pardon me. Does this board cease to exist as of the swearing in of the elected yes. board? Yes, that's my understanding. Yes. Okay. That's it's call for that in the articles. Okay. Yeah. Our articles that are governing us right now say that that will happen. Okay. Once that board is seated. Is seated. Which we have set up for the 22nd, and we have Rosie. Okay, what's your Rosie's last name? Oh, Claire. 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 I want to make sure I pronounce it right. To be there that night to swear everyone in uh -huh. on the 22nd. Okay. Have I missed a conversation that this board has had, whether or not this board puts out the warning? Have I missed that conversation? It came up at last week's yeah, meeting, it in but it, I didn't really hear one way or another. I, I, I don't think we made a decision. We, haven't, I, we, we don't really know. made a decision. I was just curious as to the deep conversation as to what would the benefits be for the for this board not to warn them. Oh, we didn't really have a deep conversation mm -hmm. about it, I think, unless it's somebody puddle. else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just it came up in the context of there's language in the articles about how the transition board kind of has has the powers that the new board will have until the new board exists. So, you know, we could warn an election, I guess. But we can't warn budget. No. Yeah. No. That's, that's, I mean, so yeah. right. It's a weird thing. And so this, this, okay. this is all. This is all in the article. So that's yeah. the benefit to each. I mean, this is my opinion. Board. I'm not saying it's the board's opinion. I just, I, I felt like it's somehow cleaner yeah. to okay. have one board warn everything that's going to be voted on on that day. Um, but that doesn't mean I have the prevailing opinion. It's just my opinion. Uh, so we're, any other future agenda items for next week? I I've got three uh, things down here. Do mm -hmm. yeah. you want to read them or? I sure. have a draft budget report for Washington Central Unified Union School District. Uh, we're going to bring you at least uh, an action on Vermont Retirement System. We have to notify them. There may be a couple other notifications. And then our, the discussion of the Articles of Agreement. It is. If I get anything from Chris Leopold, I will bring I will have it here. I will let you know that next meeting tonight, I may be calling in if I know I can't physically be here. The lawyer will be here. Um, okay. I think you guys will be fine. Is it five thirty to what's the schedule? Seven thirty. Right? Five thirty, seven thirty? Uh yeah, that's when we'll schedule it. Five thirty. And the last meeting, I thought for um did something about some articles on the deck. 
Did anybody else hear that? Yeah, yeah I, I, I heard it. I, I, I was I tired. Think? I didn't want to get into it. Did you say anything? No. Okay. No. So what you meant? Was she talking about Alan Gilbert's thing from weeks no, ago? I think she just misspoke. I, I didn't ask her about it, but that's what I think. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Good. So for number six, board communication, I just want to note that the board asked me to communicate something out via front porch form about the state of things and the election, and I didn't do that. I was plain forgot. So I'm going to try to work. I'll send something to Scott and Dorothy, and hopefully on Monday we'll get something posted in front porch forum about the forum and the election on the 21st. Yeah, I think it's happening. Oh, yeah. There was one in front porch forum today. Yeah, yeah no, that was about that. the forum it's gone out. Yeah. I was yeah. just supposed to be posting a general update about. I'll go back to the minutes. <laughs> I just realized I didn't do it, so anyway, um, that's all. So, uh, without objection, we will adjourn.